Good lord almighty. Alright, sorry, I, I'm i annoyed because right at the start of the session, uh, Aste has made a dumb joke. Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, this is the recap uh, I will make before the bodies hit the floor. What? Uh, the, the top line. So go ahead and pause. What the hell? There we go. And pause, and then I'll just scroll up a little bit more here. There you go. Alrighty. Uh, that's your recap. Good lord almighty. And the recording has been started. Hello, YouTube. Hello. <laughs> that sounded God's like suddenly name? we have a, a <laughs> TIE fighter in the air. <laughs> Basically, was what it was. What the shit happened? Hello. It's weird. TIE fighters, man. Okay. We've been invaded. It's over now. Yeah. Uh, cool. We begin our session right. cool. in the morning of day 54, which is the 24th of Cthorn. And uh, you are waking up in your suite at the Cerulean View where Professor stirs and r rolls over in the bed and sits up on the edge and sees Samity sort of perched in the furthest away possible corner of her bed, looking at you, just sort of watching you wake up. Okay, I'll, if I'm getting up, then I'll just, uh, you know, get everything ready. Joke is that I'm probably not even gonna notice this three days. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... hi. 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 Who, who are, how did you get in? Uh, I went to bed here. Um, I alarmed the room and locked it so no one else could get in. No, 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 no. I stay alarmed the room. That's me. Um, no. Yes. Lady, I don't know who you are. Not a lady. Nice try, though. I understand. I understand it. I'm an elf. However, I understand that um, elves are a little androgynous. Um. But I'm a god. Um, lady, look <clears throat> down. I. <laughs> That's lady. <laughs> Where's Oste? I am. You hurt him? No, because that's me. Now, no. if that's... Th th there is not a chance that anyone else would have gotten into this room without me or you knowing. The alarm would have went off. You would have been mentally... Right. Sick. You would have been so mentally how alarmed. how did you get in? <laughs> what grade did you complete? Oh boy! I don't know what you mean? Oh boy! <laughs> Question. Do you know any magic? For the what? Never mind. And he just leaves the. Room. <laughs> okay. Question. So. Question for the question yeah. for the table. Oste. <laughs> yeah. Or rather, Andrew. You were specifically yeah. told to look down. Did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make sure uh -huh. that was known. Okay, moving on. Thank you. So, you all hear Samity uh, as soon as this woman leaves the room. Samity starts yelling, the alarm's <laughs> not working. Wake up. Wake up. The alarm's not working. There's somebody in here. I, I bolt. I bolt. I am at the door before Oste has even left the room. And there is a woman in the hallway with long, flowing hair and the same type of attire that Oste wears. I don't might have, have any of my weaponry, but... You can try and hit me if you want. I don't mind. Uh, I, I think the easiest, even though it's going to set off alarms, I'm, uh, <laughs> as I'm bolting, I tell Samity to take cover. And as I get to the door and see that that's not anyone that I'm accustomed to seeing, <laughs> I'm just going to instinctively cast Burning Hands. Uh, I'm going to... Is that an attack roll? That's a saving it throw on your not. part. It is not. That's a saving throw. Okay. Hold on. Let me think. 
Let me think real quick. <clears throat> Does he not look the same, just with tits? Damn! I have an intelligence of eight. <laughs> I mean, you could roll a perception check, and I would say that this creature looks remarkably like Aste. Just... So let's Not. say that oh. the difficulty to oh. realize that something has happened to Aste, rather than a stranger, I mean, is in this hotel suite, is uh, let's go with an eight. Because yep. you know what oh, Aste boy. looks That's like. Cool. That's cool. Uh, my perception roll is a six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Burning Hands, what's the save for that? Dex. Dex. Okay. I think I have good Dex. Where's my. Dice. Yeah, okay, so I can Where's my dice? Brother! <laughs> Damn it! Brother! God. Okay, he's not responding. Whoops. Uh, whoops, indeed. <laughs> Shall I roll a d20 for you and call you the number out? I would like to roll the pretty rock, please. Okay! Hold on one second. <laughs> Don't take away the joy of the shiny click clacks. Um, while he's off finding shiny click clacks, can I get a uh, whatever the um, I can never remember I'm how this, it works. Yeah, but I can't remember what kind. Do you remember what kind? Is this our normal wisdom saving throw that we do? At yeah, I think it's a morning, morning wisdom. Yep, yep, yep. Is it from everybody? I... No, it's... Dusk and uh, I did it yesterday. Yeah, it's Maev and Father. Dragon business. Okay, okay. so... Dex save. Let's have that in first, and then I'll call out my... Here. Uh, yeah, I make it. <laughs> what uh, did you that's roll gonna be... 17 plus 2. It's 19. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you make the save, but you're still going to take seven fire damage. Because I rolled uh, 14 for the and you'll take half. Interesting. What if I get out of the way of it by silvery barbings, barbsing myself, subtle casting it, and then teleporting away? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give... The end, bro, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to give myself save disadvantage and then teleport away so it doesn't hit me. Is that fine? Uh, one more time. You're gonna teleport. And so what's gonna hit you? Uh, yeah, because I'm gonna silvery barbs myself and my safe. Mm hmm So he's gonna give himself the disadvantage from being hit by silvery barbs, but in doing that, he uses his magic item that gives him stuff when he does uh... astral shard. Yeah, astral yeah. shard. That's the one. Yeah, and then he's gonna. It's gonna ah! make you teleport. I just knocked over a bunch of things. Don't do that. Glad. Where'd the other one go? Oh god, where'd the other one go? There it is. E. It's, it's sort of like how if someone tries to hit me in melee, I give them disadvantage and then teleport through Astral Shard, but on myself, <laughs> if possible. Ross is going <clears> to <throat> land the hallway. Okay, cool. All right. So, well, uh, so oh, that happens. So, you instinctively cast the fiery hands thing. Burning hands, yep. And Burning Hands goes off, and Aste sees it coming and flinches and reappears how far away? It'll be just behind her, so I don't get burned. Oh, just behind her. So Sorry, that woman burned. disappears as you are shooting fire at her. Uh, and you, you may or may not be aware that that woman is now standing behind you, and Samity's head is sticking out the door, and she's frantically yelling, behind you, behind you. Okay, uh, everybody, hold on, hold on, hold on. And Rasa has made her way out into the hallway. You, lady, in front of me, now. That's I'll stay to you, Foggy. How do you I know gathered, your name? I, I gathered, but give me a minute, because he's, he's as confused <laughs> as we are. In front of me, now. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm, I like... gonna, I'm gonna dispel all of the confusion right now, cause, cause, yeah. I do not I need like... anybody else wasting anything anymore for the rest of the morning. I like come over and I'm checking my book, 
What's your name? And there is very uh, loud banging on the door. <clears throat> Ross will go to the door to handle that. Uh, yeah. please. Okay. Okay. I, I, I speak, and goes, I, can I help you? I speak the door's password. <laughs> <laughs> so that oh, yeah, because you've got it locked, yeah. Uh, and you uh, see big, m- muscle-bound, uh, half-orky, uh, sexy Jessup, Jessup, oh, Jessup uh, out mirror? in the I hallway. God, I do. Uh, seems some magic has gone off on this level, and you're the only occupied room, and we're here to, uh, uh, are we, are we having a problem? Jessup, who is no. this lady? No, Shh. there's no problem. There was a nightmare, and... We're handling it. I promise. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Hmm. And I uh, very gently try to close the door. And his low foot is right up against the door, so it won't close all the way. Lady Rasa, just yes. look me in the eye and tell me one more time. Everything's fine? Yes. Everybody's in my fine. Eye. Okay. I'm looking you straight in the eye. I promise you everything's fine. It seems like a miscommunication that I assume, you know, waking up on the wrong side of the bed, nightmare induced. I don't know. I apologize for the magic use. I will get them on their flipping asses and I will put them straight. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Lady Rasa. I very much appreciate if you don't mind. I'm going to wait here by the door for a little while. Not a problem. And he turns and around and sits on the floor, the right in front of the door. And I will close the flipping door, and I said, enough with the magic. <laughs> okay. I was about to cast guidance on you if you were going Don't. to... Don't! <laughs> None of that. <laughs> okay, this group is quite That's eccentric. I'm inclined to agree. I'm going to ask this aloud <laughs> to the room, so and I'm going to pray that the answer's yes. I'm just going to hold a hand out and wait to receive one. Somebody give me a hand mirror, please. Because uh, I thought I had one. I don't have one. Is there one somewhere in this room? Yeah, is there I one somewhere thought, in the room? No, I would I imagine. Ask you this place was that there would have been a mirror somewhere. On the scene? Uh, okay. Let's I, decide I that there's a... a yeah. <laughs> cool. And I'm just going like, to show right, him so his own face. Now is really not the time for you to be worried about your hair, but here, who is this lady? Yeah, uh, stay. Who is this lady? And I flash him his own face on the mirror. I don't know, but I see myself. I don't understand. And I'm just, I'm just gonna pull it back slightly I and told... angle it such that he can I... see his own tits in the mirror. I, I, t- I, you have boobs, bro. I, I told Samity this as well. I know elves seem to look a little androgynous. But I'm no, a guy. Like, no, like, like I, I know how you look, dude. And you, you're normally like, yeah, you've got some pecs, but like you've got C cups right now, man. <laughs> Look down. Your body has changed. I don't know why. Your body well, has changed. Then... Also, your hair is longer. Well, then good for me, I guess. People's okay. hair grows. But okay, I but mean... it is you. But yeah. boobs grow. Some version of me. For but you. me. Has yeah. this happened to you before? All the time. A little closer. And you do, do you know? Mention it. Do you know anything towards of multidimensional beings in the astral sea? No. I guess not. I guess I'm being hey, a little judgmental wait, wait. there. Hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> no, I got nothing. All right. <laughs> um, no, this. There are infinite versions of me, both of any kind. I mean. All right. Well, as, as long much as, as you're I'd love not to roll too... a, a history check and get a nat twenty. <laughs> Be yeah. like, wait a second, actually. And I All pat right. myself down. Do I still have the silver cord? Yes. Okay. Just making sure, and I like make sure you're that's there. I'm like, simply, okay. everything is the same except <laughs> the shirt vest situation is quite ill-fitting now. So just, just why does this occur? Out why doesn't it occur to you guys? We're not multi-dimensional beings. Yes, you are. You might not know it, but you are. Well, let me put it this way. It has never happened to me or any of the people that I know. That you know of. Dusk, like, just kind of pulls his trousers open a little bit, like, oh, nope, I'm good. (laughs) Yep, still good. 
still, still a, a single dimensional being. Beat me by one second. <laughs> Samity's just going to make her way into the area where everyone has congregated and just walk up in front of Aste and look him in the eye and then look down and stick one finger out and go, poke. They're real. Yes, quite. <laughs> Yours are too. I'm not doing it to you, though, because that's uh, untoward for me to do to a lady. Uh, yes, great. Um, so Shall Aste we just, yeah. has boobs. Yeah. Aste <laughs> has boobs for some amount okay. of time. Yeah, it's him. All right. Okay. I mean, his whole so, self disappears hey, from time to time. I guess the boobs do too. Uh, lucky for you, Professor is gender neutral. Oh, yeah. That works so out. it would work. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll just no, ignore it until he potentially changes back. <laughs> Though I Do figure we... that my name will cause a bit of weirdness with people we meet. Oh, so yeah, I guess you're, Professor you're, alone you're, would be fine yeah. for now. Because your whole big long title includes multiple references to masculinity. In or some the way. masculine side of, of gender. And uh, so, of the elven language, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, but, okay, but, well. But we're just going to call him Aste. Her, him, uh, it's Aste still. Yeah. Right? Is Aste, Aste yeah. is okay. I believe it doesn't so. Doesn't hurt. You're not sick. I. My back hurts a little bit. Ooh. <laughs> okay. I guess okay. we'll just sort of let that it. be then. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Uh, I'm tired. So confused. But uh. Okay. Sorry for trying to. It's fine. I'm fully prepared for any combat situation at any time, honestly. Oh, yeah. You should, have... uh, All right. you should be. You should have seen the stuff I fought in the Astro Sea, to be honest with you. Space clowns. Yeah. Uh... Okay, I'm just going to pretend you didn't say those words, and we're just going to move on from this whole topic of conversation. What about the space clones? I'm, yeah, no. I'm, let, let's. I'm gonna no. go get my bag. <laughs> she yeah, <just> let's <laughs> make her way back into the room to go get her stuff. Augie, give me my, give me my thing back. Oh yeah, here. I, I gently hand the mirror because I'm not gonna throw something in the glass. <clears throat> I drop it in my bag. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Well. <laughs> Also, I for the record, I, I, I know what I, I knew. I knew what I knew. Those were a thing. But I'm gonna choose uh, that. DM Foggy housekeeping. Has decided that that's not a thing. Huh? Wisdom saves. I have oh, uh, yes. DM housekeeping situation. I'm listening. Snaps. Snaps recap indicates there were no experience or money changes in this session. Is that because I gave you XP after we got you it. negated the Enig mirror? Yes. yes, we did okay. that at the end of the prior we already session. Did it. Yes. All right. Yep. Cool. Just making sure. Fantastic. Um, okay, I so I got a wisdom that. save of 10 from Mayev, and what did I get from Foggy? Uh, 14. 14. Oh. That's how the puppy feels about that. Modified harmony. So, your 10. Do I have one? Sorry, don't mind me. Don't. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't need foggies. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my pen went flying. So uh, there we go. Uh, Samity is back in the room, packing up her stuff in a bag, muttering to herself. I don't understand how somebody could just suddenly have boobs. I don't understand what. How does that happen? Are my boobs going to fall off? What's happening? <laughs> oh, dear. My husband's just gonna go take a 
take a seat next to Jessup and, and apologize for being confused. Out in the hall? The boobs won't <laughs> yeah. fall off. I get replaced with another version of myself from another universe. Another example of what we're doing now. Cool. And Foggy's just so going to pretend to understand easy. that. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, these versions of yourself are almost identical, so you don't really notice it. But there's a little funniness about those who live in the Astral Sea that makes our multidimensional... I will open the door, boobs, and then close the door. Ah... <laughs> <sighs> Yes. And I'm assuming you have sat down next to Jessup and you're explaining that something has gone awry and yeah. one of us suddenly is, one of one you of has boobs is... that didn't have boobs before. And Jessup yeah, is I just kind of he, he leans yeah, over toward you. All of a sudden, she was screaming and there was somebody in the room. And then all of a sudden, you know, this lady with these really big boobs who I've never seen in my life. <laughs> How have we decided that it's me and her? It's and massive. Well, look at the picture you chose. That's a lot of cleavage. <laughs> That's a lot of boob, bro. So Jessup sort of leans closer to Maev, you know, like over onto one butt cheek, leans into her and says, you Say what? Boobs? I wish I knew. I, I don't know. He was in there explaining it, but I, I'm not really that smart. Uh, but are, I, the, are, the whole magic thing, I I, I kind of reacted and... Are it, they good boobs? You know, is, is actually Professor. I Are they what? <laughs> good boobs? Big boobs? Good boobs. Are they good boobs? Good boobs. Do they look nice? <laughs> and he's like eyeballing your... Professor, come here! At... <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Oh, yeah! Definitely. Definitely? Wow. So thank you. Wow, what? Great. It's Nothing. very good to see you this morning. Uh, yeah. Professor. Yeah. Why are you Professor. all of a sudden more good amiable to see than you me? This morning. I don't have any idea, but you're okay. I'm okay. Everybody's okay. I'm going back downstairs now. Right. And he gets up okay, on bye, and dress up. Francis down the stairs. Why is everyone going to explain this crap to Gowdy Snoot? Why does okay. everyone look me more now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the benefit of boobs. She's she's still sitting on the ground after Jessup has wandered off. It's the benefit of boobs. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Booby privilege. Oh, noted. And he like starts taking notes. Boobs increase charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Advantage uh, at least. Fantastic. Absolutely. Okay, so packing up your things. Anybody doing anything else in the room before we take off? Not in the room. I want to do something in town before we leave. Super minor. Similar. Maybe not as minor. <clears throat> in the room, something at the um, desk before we leave. Dusk will ponder on what happened last night, but he's not going to say anything yet. He Regarding uh, will your... cast see invisibility. I wait, no, the whole magic thing. I don't want to cause any more alarms. Uh, magic is fine. It was that it was an attack. Oh, right, okay. It uh, was destructive yeah, so magic. Cast... You can do other magic. I'll cast yeah, invisibility. They, yeah, they didn't get mad at the alarms. Got it, all right, right. Yeah, I'll uh, go ahead and... And so oh. you're inside the room, packing up your stuff, casting Sea Invisibility. Yep. Maev is sitting outside the front door, chit-chatting with Jessup. And Jessup gets up and leaves. Are you going to go back inside, Maev? Get your stuff? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to sit there um, thinking for a second, like, yeah, they're, they're pretty nice boobs. I mean, Jessup was right. They're pretty nice boobs. I don't understand what 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 genetic makeup considers one's boobs good versus bad. And what is why is this out loud? Yes, of course. <laughs> also, aren't elves not normally supposed to have boobs this huge? I wonder. This is probably a very rare, very rare dimension I come from. Maya's just gonna stand up as he's musing about what makes the boobs good or not. 
and lean into the mom voice and go, put her hand on her on his her shoulder. <laughs> I'll tell you when you're older, and walk away laughing. <laughs> I'm I am probably at least ten times older than you. <laughs> That's why it's funny. <laughs> Um, Dusk, you cast Sea Invisibility, and it lasts more than 30 seconds or a minute, so uh, when Maiev comes trailing back in the building and is over there chit-chatting with um, she Aste, the professor, <laughs> chatting with the professor, <laughs> she Aste, uh, chatting with professor, uh, you notice that um, there is that odd little sphere sort of trailing behind her. The the same All sphere that normally is conversation. You've seen it before, yeah. Uh, I haven't tried casting dispel magic on have I? Okay. I don't know. I don't know that you have. I think Never, you did it on uh, Augie the first time. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of come up behind my Ev and I'm just gonna try to cast, yeah. Spell magic at Oh wait, me and, to... me, me and Dusky are the same height. What's up, Dusky? Third level. And you have to tell me what the math is on that. Um, for each, if it's a third level or lower, it ends. If it's fourth level or higher, the DC becomes 10 plus the spells level. Okay. And what did you roll? Uh, okay. Well, it's first. Okay. So it's a, <laughs> what that tells me is it's a fourth level or higher. Um, let me roll. Spell casting was spell attack probably. Mm, spell attack mod, yes, I think. Uh, uh, Eleven. Yeah, it's still floating there. Just, just I come up behind my just, just like uh, what is it? It's verbal and somatic, so I'm just gonna be like. Begun and fail miserably. Yeah, bless you. Sorry, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna like uh, make an eye motion above. I'll be looking straight at it, and I'm just gonna say, "Normal uh, morning visitor." Sorry, tried to do so. Tried to swap that fly and failed. If you catch my drift. I'm just going to wander down to like the end of the hallway where there's nobody there and drop my pants. <laughs> okay. All right. Just stripping in the hall. <laughs> yep. Just, just going to be like, oh, right. Well, that whoever that is is getting a show. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, yank my pants back up and wander back down the hallway while I'm refastening them. Did it work? Uh, I'll look. <laughs> it's still floating behind her. Yeah, they enjoyed every second of that. Oh, creepy. <laughs> I'll have to try a higher level next time. Well, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, but I could try to pop, pop it with some more magic juice. See if it helps. Where is it exactly? Um, I'll kind of look at <sighs> it with my eye. And Point my finger at it. I'll just, uh, yeah, it'll be like, yeah, it's, it's right here. Do you point my finger at it? I'll, uh, I'll like help triangulate it with my finger and your finger and 
So you're both pointing at it. Right. Yep. I'm going to cast message and go, stop being such a fucking creep. <laughs> I don't know if it works that way, but I don't know if they're listening or watching. I don't know if that's um, how that works. You cast message on the sphere and uh -huh. message normally is a, you can reply to this message. Uh-huh. Within, within yeah. a range, okay. right? What was that? Does it? Oh, I'll let you do the DM. Yeah, it's yeah. Messages. <clears throat> yeah, it's a hundred feet, but the thing is right there, and the thing is a uh, right. Like they built the a thing tunnel. Is not technically a creature, though. Yeah, that's true. It's not a creature. The creature is I mean, not within a hundred feet. So yeah, that's probably not going to work. I mean, it'd be really funny if it did work. Though. But you did have to say it out loud while pointing at yeah. the thing. Yeah. So yes. uh, it can't respond, but it can't respond. But yeah, okay. The thing's just wobbling up there a little bit and settles back down. <laughs> and it's just going to float behind her for 10 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. Wait. Okay. You keep an eye on it, and I'll do this. And I cast Mage Hand. <laughs> what are we keeping an eye on? Uh, Professor, we... <laughs> mm -hmm. I think we've explained that we have a daily peeping Tom, as it were. Oh. We have the magical sword. Doing this with the Mage Hand. <laughs> so is someone scrying on you? That's what it seems like. Uh -huh. well. And it seems to be randomly... One of us gets picked out of a hat, I guess. And Sometimes we notice, sometimes we don't. And if I remember to check it out in the morning, I can usually see who's being spied on. Well, all you really need to do is... Uh, there's a spell that can counter it. It's, uh, third circle, actually. It's called non-detection. Really? Yes. I don't think it's under the magical categories of the divine, but if you want, I can keep an eye out for it. Say anything that makes their lives harder. The thing is, is non-detection does cost gold to cast, but it does last eight hours. Well, if there's a way to make that work for all of us. Hmm. I'd have to think on it. Meanwhile, Maya is covering the orb as best as she can, not knowing exactly where it is, with her mage hand. Yeah, yeah. the translucent <laughs> hand, so all you're really doing is essentially like, it's like you've walked up to the camera, oh, like a security camera. Even it sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's basically all you've done. You've done the equivalent of going, this will blind the camera, and just smudging the lens. That's all you've done. <laughs> hmm. Maybe more to Canyon's private sanctum. Mm. Fourth circle? <clears throat> I don't know. Mm. Anyhow. Uh, are we getting ready to leave, gang? Well, I can go get the carriage to pick you guys yeah, up. I'm gonna, back. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of walking around town. If you don't mind, I'll try to be back here within the hour. I could I could cast feeble mind on everyone so that if you get scratched on they don't learn anything. Whoa, maybe don't do that. Oh, I'll yeah, I'll be right back. And fog is going to think what we need are feeble mind. But I appreciate you taking of a solution. Feeble mind? I'm gonna lean over to Rasa. Is feeble mind a good thing or a bad thing? I'm leaning towards I mean, good if we're on others that we don't want to have a mind, but but bad on us. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't do not do that, Professor. I can't anyways. I'm stupid enough without that. Huh? No, you're fine. Uh, you, did you go out the door? Yeah, I was going to get ready to. Um, I, I had a thing I wanted to do in town. Okay, so you've gathered up your stuff and you're heading out the door? Correct. And uh, as you take the second or third step on the stairs, you have this sense that there's someone behind you. 
I'm just going to clench my right fist tight enough for a couple knuckles to crack. Is that a threat, or... Did you say that, that out loud? Yes, that bit was out loud. Samity says, I don't think I know how to threat. Okay. You can go <laughs> can ahead. Can I come then. with you? Yeah, you're good, hon. Come on. Okay, and so she's just going to, like get as close to you as she can on the stairs and stay as close to you as possible wherever it is you're going you now have I'm, a sidekick <laughs> i'm just looking for a general you store a if you need a change of okay. scenery i got you yeah he's a little wigged out and she is on your hip <laughs> all right well uh i'm looking for a general store mm -hmm. There are plenty of shops in town that were general get what you needies. Anything in the regular player's handbook? At, uh, uh, yes. Fifteen percent markup. Uh, yes, but I do need to because it's not like a normal general goods item. I'm not certain it would actually be available. Uh, so I am going to specifically throw it at you. Would I be able to find a liar? L Y R E. It's an instrument. There is a music shop. Uh, there was that one glass one yeah, that had signs all over it. Don't touch because the whole world will collapse if you're not trained to touch it. And in that shop, oh, there were special. several mundane musical instruments. Yes. Cool. All right. I'm going to buy one. I feel as though maybe somewhere off uh, in the distance at a different time, Gladdy is twitching in her sleep. Later. Uh, they are normally 30 gold times 0.15 cool. is an additional four and a half. So 34 gold, five silver. Great. Sound fair, Mama? Yes. Fantastic. Manage inventory. And uh, were you with Snaps when she bought her drum? Uh, I think maybe? I was. Yes. It, I know Foggy and Dusk were there. Okay. Because she made a really stupid so, joke. Yeah, so the shop owner is, is going to recognize you as an unusual person in town and, you know, chit-chat with you and how are things going? Did your companion like the drum? Does it need to be tightened or tuned in any way? Is, what can I, you know, trying uh, to provide I, I, excellent yeah, service yeah, yeah, for yeah. rich people? Yeah, of course. Uh, and I need to remove 34 gold and five silver. Remove. Good. <clears throat> I give it I give it a little bit of a plin plin plon. Is it is it in tune? Yeah, it's lovely. Fantastic. Thank you. I give a gentle bow and I just drop an extra gold on the table. Oh, that's very kind, sir. I'll make sure that gets to one of the students at the academy. Of course. And I give another gentle bow and leave. And Samity is literally just on your hip, not wanting to even breathe without you right there. Because she's just a little disheveled this morning. Is it specifically because of the weird um, Aste has tits now, or is something else going on? Yeah, well, I, I don't understand. And Aste said it was normal, but that's not normal, Foggy. It's probably not normal to people like us who are of this world, but he comes from a very, very different place, and I'm not talking he comes from a different continent. Right. So it's, yeah, so it, it might be totally normal there, but here to us it's weird. I agree. It's very weird, and he should know. She should... They... Professor should know that it's weird. I know. <laughs> okay, I know. I'm just going to stick with you, man. We're, we're That's good. That's fine. Uh, That's fine. Get us home. I will make some cheese and everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Hopefully everything will be fine when I can make cheese. I just, I, I just like, I, I <laughs> attempt to offer a hug in, and in case like they shudder away, I'll back off. But if they're receptive, I'll give them a little bit of a hug. Yeah, she will let you father up, yeah. do the daddy hug, make the calming, soothing big brother hug. Yeah, big brother makes a little bit more sense for his general vibe. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. 
Uh, and now I own a. Now I own a ladder. Was gonna slip out of the room. I assume you've collected all of your things, Dusk. Right. Yeah, I've got my own stuff, and I was just gonna go get the carriage. All righty, and you stop by, got your weaponry and what, not from Gowdy yep. Snoot. With make a uh, is everyone else checking out this morning, sir? I noted the other two just left moments ago, and now you're leaving. Our, um, we sort of had an agreement with Lady Rasa that you would all travel together. Oh, right. We're, we are going to travel together, of course. I'm just going to go get the carriage and bring it around. I see. For Wonderful. Or, or, All righty. Should I set? Oh, apparently the kitchen is sending a plate up, and you see a woman drapes past you with a little platter of food heading up the stairs. Right. Yes. And she's just going to put a little plate of pastries and tap on the door upstairs as you depart. Rasa and Maev hear the tapping on the door snaps. Tap, tap, tap. Very calm, quiet tapping on the door. I apparently never poked long rest at the end of last session. I'm mm. doing it now. Y'all should do that. So Rasa, Mayev, and Snaps are hearing a, a gentle yes. knocking at the door. And Rasa would once again go to the door to try and handle. Yeah. I'm lean oh, around, Rasa. I didn't do any more match. Oh, that's not Jessup. Never mind. <laughs> oh, good morning, ladies. I have the kitchen uh, said that you required this. Uh here you go and it's just a relatively small plate that only has three pastries on it and she's just holding it out for one of you to take it from her three little tiny pastries Last all with with us as well? hmm? is, oh that's uh, right is yes Aste is, still in, yes. Yes. is so still in the room yes yes Aste is still in the room four pastries thank you very much four pastries only four pastries on it and all of them have like an apple compote. They're identical. Interesting. Thank you. Thanks, lady. Have a lovely day. And she turns around and wanders down the stairs. Uh, so, Dusk, you're walking through town. Uh, you would, uh, at some point, you would pass Foggy and Samity in the music shop. Hey. Sorry, one moment. Trying to okay. talk to kids will be right. Nope, you're okay. Right. I'm managing tiny to humans. Go to bed. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I'm making my way through town towards the gallery. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And you're smelling fresh baked bread. There's cinnamon in the air. Something smells like maple as you go past one of the bakeries. It, it's it's a, a tasty smelling morning and walk as you stroll through town. Mm. Not hungry enough to deter me from the task at hand, but noted. Okay. What happens next? Wait, so... As dusk is going down through the the boardwalk, he's going to look as he's passing the uh, gallery and is going to hang a left and go into the gallery. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I need a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> This still happened, huh? Wisdom saving. Wasn't ready for that. Wisdom saving. I'm very wisdom. Very wisdom. Uh, 28. Cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And you scroll in and you see, um, what was his name? Jorvin? Uh, Sounds right. It was a J, yeah. Yeah. Jorvin. yeah, Jorvin's behind his little, like, it's not even a counter, really. It's just like a half wall uh, with a little bar stool tucked behind it. And he hops down off his bar stool and comes scampering up to you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Um, uh, forgive me, I've forgotten your name, sir. It's um, something like 
Dusk, dusk, yes. Dusk, good, good morning, Dusk. How how are you this morning, sir? How can I'm I be of well. service? I'm well. Uh, oh. And Muriel tells me that some stuff happened. Right. Uh, and um, the headmaster is a little befuddled about some uh, destructive behavior by the students in the library last night, which is very unusual. We normally have very well-behaved students, but somehow some of the children snuck into the library and vandalized a portrait on the wall of our original um, founding dude person. Founding dude. <laughs> founding dude, eh? For the founder of the school has been, the, the portrait of the school's founding father has been vandalized. We assume by some angry students. I don't know what they're angry about. It's all very, very confusing. But well, uh, Muriel said that things are okay now with the students. They are not in danger. Right. That's more important than any graffiti. And uh, I think the other thing I'd like to do is apologize to you. I believe that's an order. Because I know I was very short and gruff with you on our first uh, acquaintance. Well, I'm assuming that you thought it was I who was harming the students. Well... When you were be a little coy with us, it didn't lead me to any confidence that you were not playing a role in this shenanigans. But I realize now what was more afoot, and therefore I do owe you an apology, but as long oh, as sir, people aren't I being appreciate your to buy apology in. and 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 I appreciate whatever it is that you did, because Amuriel couldn't give me any details, but she said you have protected the children. That's the more important that thing That they're here. safe. That's that's yes. what you and your companions did, and, and I appreciate that more than your apology, sir. Well, that's very kind of you. Um, and I felt, knowing what I learned yesterday, that the things, the things we're feeling when we were observing some of the artwork in this gallery wasn't just some random spell put on the artwork to make me feel frustrated and whatnot. It was more than likely coming from the very student themselves. Perhaps. So in the light of... And he gets that weird blank look on his face like, dude, you just don't understand art. It's probably That's very what true. art is. <laughs> right. Don't... But for to humor me for a second, Mr. Jarvan, uh, I'd like to purchase that wolf in the spirit oh, of... Oh, certainly, sir. And will the student uh, know that their art was purchased? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see. Who who made the wolf? And he's flipping through some papers. Oh, his parents will be so pleased. So pleased. That'll cover his tuition for quite some time. Well, considering how frustrated and determined maybe but that de determination fueled by frustration uh this hopefully will give this student a bit of a chin up and so what exactly do i uh, uh 1000 it's 1795 gold pieces and if it wasn't for the fact that this is going towards a student i'd probably be raising an eyebrow at you but i understand that will cover his room, board, and his uh, tuition for the remainder of this season. You said 1,795 gold pieces. Oh, his parents will be so pleased. I was like, all right. As he's like, he picks out his, this rather engorged pouch of gold and just is like, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is about. I think if I did my math right, I think this is 1,795. Here, I'm gonna round it up to a nice cool 800, 1800. And uh, just as a token of my sincere apology to you for, but and also just for my appreciation of you, Karen, for your students. That is just amazing, sir. I, I let me get that wrapped up for you. Would you like to? Uh, I, I can wrap it uh, prote in the protective layers of wool and batting. 
He's gonna uh, like so that... fall up over my shoulder and walk out the door. Oh, so you're touching it, you're looking at it, you've you've already encountered it again in person. Uh well I was I'm assume, dusk in dusk's mind. I magic... assumed that you strolled straight in and started talking to Jorvin without looking at it. Oh well I was going to after I purchased it, I was going to walk over and just, you know, take it. So you've paid the bill, you turn around, you approach the little table plinthy thing that it is on, and as soon as your eyes are on it, you start noticing the grain in the wood and the shapes and the the intricate carving and it appeals to that part of you that makes carving and as you uh take it in once more as a beautiful piece of art you also begin to have that emotional reaction you had before where it is beautiful but it also somehow makes you frustrated there is a sense of frustration that burbles from underneath as you appreciate the art. It is beautiful, but it still gives you that strange sense of frustration. Uh, and Dusk is just going to be like, frustrated that I didn't get rid of this magic. All right, I I bought it. I'll deal with this later. <laughs> I can't blame and... the fact that this was made after we, or before we, uh, did things all the problem. This, this, yeah. this is a dust head. It's like I can't really blame. I suppose. I suppose I asked for this walking back into this gallery, and that he's just gonna not make eye contact with any of the other art pieces of artwork. Right. So Jorvin's gonna wrap it up for you, or are you just walking out I, with it visible well, to right, the public? Uh, I suppose maybe some uh, something to protect it for the road, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So he's going to wrap it in this uh, wool batting stuff and then covered by a chunk of oil cloth and tied down with a string. And it's all ready to go. All right. The I'll flat base it of and... it is exposed. Yeah. I'll, I'll just heave it up over my shoulder and make me way out the door. Pleasure doing business. Uh, and... Yes, sir. I, I'm so looking forward to speaking to his parents. This is going to be a wonderful day for them. I do hope so. If there's any further troubles of anything, if you're ever concerned about something with your students, you uh, find the and he's face like leaning forward as you speak, waiting to hear what you're about to say yeah. anxiously. Find the fate wanderers in Dybrook or wherever we are. Fate Wanderers. Got it. Dybrook. Fates Wanderers. Fates. Fates Wanderers. Okay. And he grabs wanderers a little index card and he's writing it down and he's okay. And he tucks it in his vest pocket. Got it. We we will definitely reach out to you if anything else untoward happens with our students. Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate your caring for them the way we do. Well, like I said to you yesterday, not all monsters live in caves. And Still don't know what you mean by that, but okay. <laughs> Supposed to be thought-provoking. <laughs> Goodbye! Bye! <laughs> Until we meet again. <laughs> Ta-ta for now. And he's busily cleaning the area where the wolf had been, preparing it for some other new piece to be placed there. And... Off you go. Right. And you make your way uh, from the gallery further south, past even more lovely break bakery smells. And one of the windows, you see that dude. That bakery dude. Oh, the bakery dude. The, uh, the, the bakery husband dude. And he dude. just waves at you yeah. and sticks his head out the door. Do you need some breakfast? I think we're okay, but... You know what? Here, I'll just, stop hey, by. Wait, so wait, wait here a minute. This guy is a Muriel's husband, right? Right. Mur Muriel's yeah. husband. So he says, just just give me a minute. Just wait right here. And he All ducks right. back in. Just... And he comes back out and he's got this little paper sack. And he just sort of thrusts it at you. Here, take these. Take these. They're hot. But just take these. And there's some little rolls in there with little sugary white uh stringy like hot cross buns and 
I'll just look at him and just say, blessings of Saloon on you. I appreciate that. Thanks for doing whatever it is you did for my wife. She's much calmer this morning about things. Well, it's just what we do, the Fates Wanderers and all. All right, well, enjoy your rolls. And he goes back in the bakery. <laughs> Dusk will just chuckle and be like, uh, if any more appreciation is lobbed on me, I don't know if I'll uh, be, make it to the carriage. <laughs> and they'll get all the way there. Yep. Take care of and Jezebel and they've, wine drinker. Yep. They're happily blanketed and oats and uh, a bucket of wine and a bucket of water and several apples on the ground around their bucket of oats. They have definitely been pampered. This whole time. Yeah. I'll uh, throw whoever the stable hand is that's there. I'll uh, toss him a gold coin. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. I got to tell you, this one over here with the wine, that's one affectionate horse. Well, you know. and <laughs> I've never had really, a horse uh... quite so attentive. It's, it's every very, time it's, I, every time you go over there, she gives you a little nudge, like well, like a horsey hug. Very sweet, very sweet horse. <laughs> well, you know the wine does that to people, including horses. I guess so. I well, appreciate she, you taking good care of them. She's great, and they're both quite healthy. I'm I'm uh, for traveling horses. They're both in really good shape, sir. Well, it helps that I can uh, relate to them. Okay. I'll just leave well, you. You have a nice day, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he'll load in the uh, the art and uh, get the carriage out and start making the way back to uh, Cerulean View. The bitty clop and rattle rattle along the little pebble path. And uh, that horseshoe driveway situation is happening. Uh, I've forgotten where the hell we are. Probably after Our boys left and we had mm -hmm. breakfast. Snaps would have gone downstairs to look for Gowdy Snoot. Ah, okay. Uh, Gowdy Snoot is at the counter, waiting for the rest of you to check out. Um, the rest of us will be along shortly, but we paid for our first night and started a tab. Uh, well, we're going to be checking out today. And DM, refresh my memory. It was 10 gold pieces, I think, for the night. Looking. South End Academy. Cerulean View. 10 gold piece in the, uh, in the tower. Yep. Okay. She's going to have 10 gold pieces ready uh, for Mr. Gowdy Snoot. But she's going to say, this should cover... Our second night, do we owe you anything else for kitchen services or cleaning services? Uh, no. I, uh, no. You only ate in the restaurant once, and you would have paid when you were in the restaurant. Anything the kitchen decided to send upstairs is not my business. And so Snaps is going to slide across the stack of the 10 gold. And then with her right hand, she is going to uh, slide across two platinum pieces. Uh, this is for the kitchens, for their wonderful service. And then with her left hand, she is going to take one more platinum piece and slide it across the desk. And this is for you. And with it, my apology for my clan's conduct and the mess we left last night. Um, it the if gardeners we are, welcome are not happy. Again. <laughs> the gardeners are not happy this morning, but yes, fine. Yeah, but, uh, I appreciate your contribution to the cleaning of the lawn. That's lovely. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and that's that's for you. Uh, if we are welcomed back, you have my word that the blood won't happen again. Oh, I'm less concerned about the blood and more concerned about the... Well, it doesn't matter. That's fine. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, generosity, and you are welcome back as long as you're all traveling with Lady Rasa. You have free reign to visit any time. 
snaps felt kind of bad because like he started cleaning it up himself like he was a dick to us at first but like (laughs) then he came out with the bucket and started mopping himself and she felt really bad about it but anyway um the rest of us will be along shortly um but i think that settles us up so she's gonna go back upstairs before the the boys come back oh okay so you're not taking your weaponry and whatnot back from gaudi snoot yet not quite yet just i'll probably do that when we leave i just wanted to settle up and like kind of apologize for leaving the blood all over the walls last night. I gotcha. don't think Snaps really knew about the graffiti. Yeah, probably not. Um, as you are departing, you hear um, uh, Jessup uh, approach Gowdy Snoot and uh, say, Kitchen, how, what do you, how are you going to... And Gowdy Snoot says, not to worry, I'll take care of it. <laughs> And Jessup's like, okay, and wanders off. Does and so, Jessup wander upstairs? Go back into that little library nook on the opposite of the restaurant oh, where okay. he and his dudes hang out. So Snaps has come back upstairs to gather the three of you to come downstairs to meet Dusk and the chariot. Okay. I imagine Foggy and Samity will arrive while Snaps is talking to Gowdy Snoot and there's, you know, a bit of a meet up in the lobby and then up the stairs to get everybody shit together and come back down the stairs, get your stuff from Gowdy Snoot. And uh, by the time y'all get outside, Dusk is sitting there Driving a, a carriage with horses. Rasa would probably but, just kind of pull my up to the side going, do you think the kids are more back to normal yet? Just, I know we did what we needed to, but I'm still concerned that they're empty us, so to speak. Yeah, I've been... Trying not to think about it, them still being empty, but it's not working real good. And um, you you do the, the, the writing of letters things, right? Do we know how to, do, do we know where Muriel lives? Can we write her letters and check in on the kids? I don't know if we know where she lives, but I don't think it would be all that hard as long as she lives in town. Okay, okay. I think I think we should do that. As, like as soon as we get home, we should send a letter. Okay, we can we can send the letter. Okay. And 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 maybe 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 we'll we'll talk in her head for a little bit every once in a while too to check his letters are slow but talking in people's heads happens right away yeah yeah that that might be better it's just letters can be long and yeah. talking in head is not long snaps told me i gotta keep it short no yeah Gerald told me i gotta keep it short somebody told me i gotta keep it short Not good at keeping it short. We'll work on it. We'll figure we'll figure out what, what way to do. It. But I'm still worried. Me too. But they gotta be okay, because otherwise we're just gonna kill the teacher, dude, in charge. Because well wait, no, it wasn't that one. That one's already dead. No, honestly, what I was thinking about, I don't see how we can track them all down, is if the the emotions and whatnot were going into the paintings, literally, is it the paintings that need to be I don't know. 
Aww. And like you can you can see the gears turning and you can like almost smell the smoke coming out of her ears. And I, as the broken character that I am, try to do an arcana check to see if like that logic's out. You may roll an arcana check. Uh, and if Aste is in the room overhearing this conversation, uh, he's allowed to also pitch in any information he recalls from his attempt to dispel magic. Uh, 14 for my arcana check. So I will say that you remember Aste trying to do something to make the shimmery shimmer on the painting go away. Mm-hmm. And it didn't go away, and Rasa was still crying. But the mm-hmm. urge to buy it, eventually Aste was able to make that go away. So some part yeah. of you is cognizant that Aste was unable to make it stop. Okay. But he okay. also physically didn't destroy We We didn't go full Dorian Gray and destroy the picture. <laughs> True. But Rasa, okay. I'm going to let that. There's no way she can crack every single painting down, but. I'm going I'm yeah, I'm to let it ruminate don't... for a little bit. Yeah, and you guys don't really know for sure how long the Enigmirror was there doing that. What yeah. the Enigmirror thought was good supporting help. Uh, you have no idea how long, and it had no idea how long, because time is different. Yeah. I'm a soup. I am a fork. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just like letting that, that train of thought rumble around in my head and I'm, I'm just going to like clap a hand on Rasta's shoulder and go, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll do what we swore to do and we will make sure that they are okay. All that matters. I'm going to let them all wander off before I, uh retrieve my stuff from Gowdy Snoot and I'm gonna just kind of look around and can I see where Jessup is sitting from the front desk? Uh, You know that Jessup is behind Gowdy Snoot's counter and to the right around a corner. You know that's where he and his buddy hang out waiting for you know things to happen. (laughs) I'm like I'm just gonna Look at Gowdy Snoot. Like I'm gonna like hover my hand over the thing and go. I'll be right back. And I'm gonna just dart around him. <laughs> oh yes, the library. Yes, D- did you find? <laughs> Paying him absolutely no there. mind. I'll be right back. Yeah, he just <laughs> throws his hands up and puts them down on the counter. Fine. Yes. Okay. I'll wait here. <laughs> and, and when you I... find. Jessup and his buddy are just lounging in a chair. Read, he's flipping through a book. Just reading. Um, cool, 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 cool. I'm going to shove my hand into my money pouch. I'm going to pull out eight platinum and drop four in each of their laps and then go, bye. And then I'll go get my Wait, shit. <laughs> what is a shit? Uh, bye. <laughs> Such a generous bunch of m- m- miscreants. The end of mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah yes, both of those are accurate yes. words. Ahem. <laughs> I am neither generous nor a miscreant, thank you. Okay. <laughs> and off you go. <laughs> and Jessup is just, you know, flustered by the coins landing on his book and the other dude is like what's all this for what's this for what what happened as you wander off dowdy snoots at the front (laughs) you confused them there didn't you a little bit there ma'am i'll figure it out 
I like confusing uh, hand, people. And hand then I, I wink at him because I winked at Jessup before I left. And, and then okay. I you know, do the thing and I'll wink at Gowdy Schnoot before I leave. Here's your stuff. It's, it's, you know, don't tell anybody I said it except your friends. But really, it was quite a pleasure to have you here. It was the most Me? excitement I, yeah, you all, you, you your whole little group. <laughs> oh. It's the most excitement I've had in months. Just Who don't says? tell anybody I said that. Howdy, Newt. Gotcha. He's just leaning over the counter real quiet to my F. Don't tell anybody I said this, but you guys have been the most entertaining and exciting ex- experience I've had in months. This has just been an eye opener. Thank you very much for staying with us. But I don't know who. Hand on his shoulder. <laughs> but I've never we'll heard. We'll come of back real soon. Wandery, fatey, whatever. I have no idea what that is. It fates wanderers. That's that's us. No, no, never heard of it. Not a once. It, but it. El Dusk. I said I've never heard of you. Uh, okay. Just tell him I said it. It'll be good. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're just <laughs> as confused now as jo- uh, Jessup was when you threw money at him. Yep. <laughs> well, I'll hop up into the into the carriage and go, well, that was weird. I confused the guys, and then Gowdy Schnoot confused me. He he said that we we were the, the most fun he's had in months, but he's never heard of us. Is Is... Snaps, do you need to go make sure he's okay? <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Okay. Onwards we go, I guess. So, Snaps settles in the back. Her little book open in her lap. Starts reading. I know Oz stays back there thumbing through some kind of book. And probably struggling a little bit with where do I hold it because this is weird. <laughs> Are you kidding boobs. me? I just, I just used the top of my boobs as a platform. Just, just put it down on there. There we go. Uh, he has more than C's if that's what he's doing because it requires at least a D <laughs> to have a shelf. <laughs> Who shelf even boob. knows? Have you looked so closely? Hmm? I have would look. I'm sure of it. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. So, traveling northwest from Salt End Landing. I'm zooming out. Oh, yeah. No, so, sure. you're, you're headed up this road here. Uh, out mm-hmm, of town. Mm-hmm. Yep. You pass the dock master's building and, uh, you know, you see lots of ships. There's two or three big ships pulling in and pulling out. And <laughs> Are there any rich oh. fucks? Oh, that's fantastic. Are there any yeah, rich fucks uh, on the docks? Uh, yes, there are rich fucks getting on and off the boats and making their way into or out of the town and doing the thing. People Just coming gonna, to see the place. I'm I'm going to let out the most menacing cackle I can as we leave town. <laughs> you see a head pop out of the dock master's office. Watch your carriage go by. Hmm. Okay. Back in. <laughs> yes. Uh. So, traveling northwest from Salt End Landing. On the morning of day 54, it's actually a pretty late morning because there was some dicking around going on. Um, it's going to take, let's see. Um, yeah, you're going to end up having to camp on the side of the road. There isn't, you know, you're not sure what's between here and there, and you're just going to go till you run out of energy, and then you'll camp on the side of the road if there hasn't been a town between here and there. And after about six hours in the wagon, uh, Rasa, can I have a perception check or your yep. passive perception? Your passive perception is a 20. Is that true? 
I need him to switch the screen. Yeah, passive is 20, and I rolled... Done is 23. Yeah, so... As you're, you know, traveling along, the ocean view is on the right, on the left, and woods and uh, grassy areas are on the right, and you're just trundling along on this pretty well-defined road. There's no need for a navigation check because it's a trade road. You've been on it for a while now, and you kind of just follow the road. There's ruts in the road, and you just keep going. Um, but you, after about six hours, notice. Uh, just the tiniest glimmer in the shrubs on the right. Like, Ooh, she knows what glimmers mean, so she will, like, you know. Like something metallic glinting in the sunlight. The last time she saw something glimmering, she was gifted. She so at this point, support. she's just going to, you know, hop off a moving wagon. Whoa, 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 Lady Rasa. You have to go? And... Uh-oh. I told I you to go so before we left. I mean... No, I just jump off a moving wagon. We're good. <laughs> I'll bring the carriage to a stop, assuming I notice that Lady Ross has bailed. She just hopped out. Um, and I would like cool. to go investigate. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, with your initial perception, you obviously are able to pinpoint exactly where that glimmering came from. And there doesn't seem to be anything there, but... Five or ten, uh, five or six feet deeper into the bushes, there's something glimmering further in. And she goes after it. Yep, yeah, your skirt. She's been get... bored. She's been sitting still for six hours. Yeah, your your skirt gets caught on a little thorn in a bush, and you know you're you're squitching your way in between some more bushes, and you get to that glimmering, and there's nothing there, but there's something glimmering over there. And you make your way around a different shrub and a bush. And this one has flowers on it. Smells real good. But you really don't give a shit because you're looking for that glimmery spot. And you find, shit, there ain't nothing there. And you look in the old, it's over that way now. And you make your way around another bush. And you have now traipsed in and amongst bushes and trees and shrubs and flowers a good 30 feet off the road to the point at which you can no longer see the carriage and the carriage can no longer see you. And she's probably giggling, thinking that this is similar to the last. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, this last five feet that you've gone looking for the shiny spot, when you get to it, uh, there is a little lizard peeking out from under a bush. And it just kind of looks up at you, a little bit of a start. And then it slithers out from under the thing. And then it sort of bends its back weird and its front feet come up off the ground. And it sort of leans up and then he's standing and there and he's balancing on his tail like the Geico Gecko. And you hear and a I voice. Pick it up. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. And so in your hand is this teeny weeny little lizard. And a, a voice comes from the lizard. And it says, greetings, child. Well, and hello. as it begins to speak, it starts to get bigger in your hand and heavier. If you're going to get bigger. I'm gonna heavier. To and that's like five pounds. That's like 10 pounds. You can't hold that with one hand anymore. This thing is getting really big. And uh, eventually you're going to have to drop it. I would not uh, drop. I would still place. But... Okay, yeah, but you're going to have to let it go because by yeah. the time it finishes morphing and reshaping and being shiny and glittery and looking ethereal, it eventually comes solid again. And what is standing in front of you is a beautiful woman wearing a dress made of polished brass dragon scales. And she looks just as elegant as you do. Um, she looks human. Uh, but her eyes are a little bit cat-like. The pupil is a little off. And her teeth are just a little too toothy when she smiles. Can I do an insight? Yeah. Um, are we doing Will's rules or my rule or your rules? Or... Uh, yeah, two. tell me what you add. Plus two. 
I'm not very And what wistful. is it you're trying to intuit? What are you looking for? Um, just an overall sense of kind of safety, I think, at this point. Uh, you do not Illusion feel threatened. Or, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, you don't feel any threatening uh, connotation to this experience. This woman, it now stands before you and... Uh, especially when she begins to speak again, your heart's going to settle right on down. She's going to say, I wish to make a request regarding the stewardship of the potential. I wish to see it and touch its surface. You have my oath that I will not take it from you without consent. Will you allow me this opportunity to confirm its status? Yes. And I'd hand over the dagger. And she looks at the dagger in your hand, but does not take it from you. That is a gift that is for you. I would like to see the potential, please. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> My brain is like not catching up. Potential and how? Uh, the object that you found in the jungle that you've been traveling with? She's, like, Barasa knows that we've been trying to keep this as hidden as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And while she has, I know you say that you will not take it, but we are afraid that it is being tracked. Oh, yes, it is. So I don't want to take it out due to the fact that it is being tracked. I, I, at least we think it's safe when it's away. I cannot sense it when it is there. Wherever it is that you are storing it, I can no longer sense it. I don't know who had it, to be honest. You would yeah, have snaps, snaps is bad at holding Um because it's it's big. It's like 75 pounds. How far are we we're six hours away? Do would Rasa have any idea about nearby towns or things like that? Um I think that by now you have a general feeling of the continent. And your assumption is that you will probably make it uh, to a little speck on the map uh, by nightfall. There, There is a little speck on the map up here where the shoreline changes shape dramatically. There's a little speck on this, the point. Let me get you the map. Because Ross is really hesitant to bring anything towards anyone that could get hurt by another dragon attack. So we're getting close to that. Yeah. One, two. Yeah, you, oh, you're pretty sure you could one. make it. Yeah, you're pretty sure you guys could make it to whatever that is on the map. Mine is for some reason not. It's all pixelated and wonky. <gasps> there it is. Yeah, so... Uh, on our map, it says Losentoft, but on the map that you have seen of the continent, it's just a speck. Okay. Um, while I trust you, the fact that you're saying it is being tracked is worrisome to me because I don't know who all it is being tracked. I don't want to put other people in danger. I don't physically have it, one of my others. Someone else I trust dearly has. I could re retrieve it, but I don't want others to be hurt. There's already been a dragon attack. I am aware. Is there any assurance that you can give me that if I take it out of where we are keeping it, where no one can sense it, that another attack will not occur? No. Oh. 
would you allow me to consult with my party, my family? Yes. Please wait here. Yes. And she will walk back to the group. Maya's leaning up against the carriage with her her one foot kicked back behind it and doodling with her tattoo equipment on her knee. Duska's car. Where'd you go? So we have a visitor. I did not bother to confirm their identity, but considering she grew from a little lizard into a very noble looking lady with dragon scales, you know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, she wants to look at the egg. Miley? Yeah, I was going to say sky teeth lady. I, that's my gut. And Do I want to know? Uh, yes, actually, this is a good thing. Uh, gave uh, Rasa a knife at one point. She's cool. And pulled our arses out of the fire really right quick. She yeah. wants okay. to see the egg. Oh. Yeah, and I told her that I don't want anybody, I don't want any more dragon attacks. She has confirmed it is being tracked. But they cannot see it where we have it. Dragons and normally I'm telling you all during this journey to the next stop. But last night I had a bit of a chat with the Moon Maiden. Dude, you oh. had six hours. What were you doing? I that they passed so I was quickly, driving. I barely even noticed the time. We're gonna say that the red dragon that Dybrook is looking for us. And it is in our best interest, at least as far as the Moon Maiden can discern, that we don't offer up the thing that it seeks, which, assuming is that I... I was told mm -hmm. she would not take it. She gave me an oath. Mm -hmm. She would not take the egg I, from me. I, well, the worst I thing I am that inclined happened... to trust your friend. Um, yeah. And we are in the middle of nowhere, and Maybe we just plan not to stop in a town. Or to if stay I may. away from a population center? If I may. Professor. Yeah, go ahead, Professor. Professor's trying to talk. So we're dealing with potentially a dragon here, yes? Your friend here is a dragon. Right? It's either a dragon, dragon god or. Friend. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm now halfway between it's either a dragon or a god. Okay, well, either way, they would have some strong magic, yes? And at least strong enough to do about fourth circle, yeah? Why not just I, see if they know private sanctum and then pull the egg out in the private sanctum? I did ask if she could give me any assurance that a red, or I didn't necessarily know it was a red dragon, but the dragon that attacked would not come and attack soon mm -hmm. if I were to take it. That's what I'm saying, though, is if it's yeah. tracking Dick's location and it's doing so by some form of divination, a private sanctum would block that. Or could you hop into the bag of holding and look at it there? <laughs> oh, <right>. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I don't know say... magic well, but I don't like the feeling of that. Okay, yeah. I, I just... I know. I don't know. I haven't stuck my head in there for to, to know what it's like. I am not going to make this decision on my own. I want us all I to come that. to a agreement one way or the other. As a man who only recently got so directly involved with religion, um, if a god's asking you to make a leap of faith and you trust the god, I say go for it. Ooh, that's, that was really good. If 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 your goddess is asking you to have faith in her, and then he just sort of gestures open handedly towards you as if to silently say, "Have faith." Everyone else in the same. Well, seeing as how you're, I absolutely you. trust your judgment, Rasa, and I am inclined to trust. I have no you judgment you of ill will. I I'm, I felt completely safe. I felt no threat. Well, I think if this dragon is the same one that protected us in our darkest hour, inclined to trust it, even if that means possibly exposing 
our location to those seeking it. I think we have to deal with these shadowy folks or this dragons or whoever it is. We have to deal with them one way or the other. They might so be able might to guess well, where we are anyway, considering they were watching us this morning. Well, somebody knows. We don't know yet if that person yeah, we have knows. No, we have no idea how many parties Fair. are tracking this I thing. The next question I'm going to ask. Oh, all right. Anyway. Yeah, go ahead. Go do your thing. Do your thing there, Lady Rasa. We'll be right here. Snaps, can I have... Snaps will hand over the they'll... bag of holding. They'll be right here. Maya will intercept the bag and we'll go with Rasa. Because an oath was spoken. Uh, Lady Rasa. Do the uh, thing with your, uh, your mind oh, there. Wait. Just, you know, never be too... Yeah, you two go. We'll be here. My whispers. Give me a minute. How many people? Remember, four of us. Three, four. To four. I don't remember. Please, bear with me. Three hours of whispers. Maya, if you are coming with me, do you want to be able to communicate that way? I'm not sure. We should be trying to hide thought. I don't need to be included on the whispers, no. I will be with you. Then the rest of you four right. for three hours will be in my head. Insanity. <laughs> Samity's just sort of tucked in the su- in next to Foggy in the cart and has dozed off. I think the last thing her head's Samity pressed against the side of the wagon. I think the last thing Lady uh, 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 Samity needs is a uh, grass on her head. Out of nowhere. Come on, it's fun. <laughs> well, anyways, don't keep your Jeez. friends waiting. Go ahead. Maya, I would still insist on taking the bag, but I will not prevent you from coming with. That's fine. And I will go and wander my another 30 feet or whatever it is to try and find her again. And there's little sparkly my... bits to remind you the path, to, to remind you where you're going. And uh, you arrive and you start talking to this woman. And what do you say to this woman? First, I would like to introduce you to my sister. This I'm having difficulty hearing the Sarah. Well, it's because I'm side talking to the William right now. Yeah, okay. Is that... Didn't really come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really delve that deep. <laughs> My world building for the uh, uh, Order of Amethyst wasn't that thorough. You can create that honorific <laughs> if you'd like. Well, is, is it not a knight, a lady? A, a, yeah, it can Technically? Be. Okay. Sure. So she's still going to yeah. think knight, lady. This is Lady Maev. One of the knights of the um, Order of Amethyst. There we go. We're meshing and I'm getting lost. Mm-hmm. There we go. <laughs> Deem. <laughs> um, and uh, Maev, she is talking to a bush. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Maev's kind of looking around. And, and she's like lockstep behind Rasa for the trip up there, but a step behind and to the left. And just kind of like, Rasa, you said there was a lady here. I'm a lady now? When did I become a lady? Well, I guess with the whole knighting thing. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But you said there was a lady here. Just trust. I do trust mm-hmm. you. But I'm confused. I, see. I mean, I know I'm usually confused. I, I feel like this is a lot like the uh, dusk and foggy thing where they see stuff that I don't understand. So maybe this is uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. Riggs, go kill and, the cricket. It's right there. Okay. I am sorry. And uh, as you're trying to help Maev understand that there, there's some shit going down, Maev, you will see the direction in which she was talking and gesturing. There is a shimmer in the air, like 
uh, you've looked out over the desert and you see how the air kind of quivers weirdly. Like the there's something between you and the bush you thought she was talking to, but it's kind of wavery, like hot air would be. It's just a little weird. Well, I, well, mm, mm. I'm going to hunker down for a second and like pull my backpack off and start going through it and looking up while she's talking. <laughs> and Rasa, you see her um, reach toward you uh, as you've held, I assume, hold up the bag. Um, but she has reached toward you palm down. She is not prepared for you to put something in her hand. She is prepared yep. for you to let her touch something. Yep. Yep. So did you pull it out the bag? Not yet. Okay. Again, just out of an abundance of talking to my party, we have become aware that a red dragon is tracking us. Is there anything you can do? I honestly don't understand half of what was said about a sanctum or a what Maya, what did Aste say? Aste said a lot of really big words. I know. And a lot of the magic key stuff goes straight over my head. Okay, so we're not entirely sure. But is there anything you can do to veil this so that he cannot see or she cannot see or I believe that your location is all that they are concerned with. Sensing the potential is not within their power. Okay. And she would very <laughs> gently reach into the bag and take the egg out and hold it up so that it touches her hand. So palm down, you touch yep. her palm with the egg. And uh, Mayav, you see the egg come out of the bag, and it's all wibbly wobbly weird, and it is uh, shades of silver and white as it is in um, Rasa's hand, because you're a white or a silver dragonborn, correct? I think I'm white. I'm yeah. Sure she's white. So it, yeah. So it kind of morphs and models and the color of it is familiar from when she touched it before. And uh, as soon as it gets up and touches whatever she's pressed it against that you can't see, uh, a color cascade happens in that strangely mobile surface of it that slowly works its way down from the top and swirls around and the white slowly is subsumed into a shiny uh, bronze color that swirls around on the surface with little specks of white. And then after a moment, those bronze swirls are interrupted by platinum swirls that work their way from the top down to the bottom of this ball thing. Uh, and it, it changes color, and then it changes back to bronze. And then from Maev's perspective, it changes back to white. And from Rasa's perspective, when she removes her hand, it will change back to white. Um, you hear her... Huh? I was, I was digging around in my backpack. And... Then I remembered, because I have an intelligence of eight, that it was on my waist. So I pulled up my Wand of Secrets, and I would like to use it, because she is talking to a bush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, let me do Rasa, and then I'll come back to that. Uh, Rasa, <laughs> as, she, uh, as it comes into contact with her hand and this color change starts happening, you hear her breath catch in her throat, and those squinty... Uh, pointy, uh, fierce eyes soften and become shiny with unshed tears. And she says the following. The potential must be allowed to become fulfilled in an environment free of influence from gods and men. 
I would like your permission to beseech Bahamut to ensure it is protected on the material plane until it is fulfilled. I'll be honest, a lot of that kind of went over my head. Um, how would this, how would that happen? Like, I. If he agrees and you elect to transfer it to my custody, I can promise you that it will be safe and hidden from those with selfish, selfish or wicked desires. Agree, favored one, and you'll earn my gratitude as well as my respect. And Rasa definitely has the thinking face on, and she's going to rapid fire. She wants to take it. She's Wait. going to protect it. In hold whispers. on, hold on, hold okay. on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as you're preparing to do that rapid fire whisper thing, uh, you her hand uh, comes back down on it, and you feel a pressure as she is pushing it back toward the bag. She's not taking it from you. She is simply directing it with her palm toward the bag of holding. I, I will allow it to go back in the bag of holding, but the rapid fire is still going off where she's asking. You know, she's, I have more questions, but just to try and get them kind of a little bit up to speed. Yeah. About the um, fact that she is offering to protect the egg if she can get, you know, permission from God. And <laughs> apparently well, this is a really important egg. And, and I kind of just want this off my hands, so I'm okay with this, but. Yay, nay, quick. Probably the most jumbled mess any of them have ever received. (laughs) Yeah. Big jumble, big jumble. And Mayev, you have your wand of secrets. And what does it do again? Read it to me. Um, I will read it to you, but I am only hearing Ross's side of the conversation. Um, Correct. Yep. While holding it, I can use an action to expend one of its three charges. If a secret door or trap is within 30 feet of you, the wand pulses and points at the one nearest you. So what you're saying is you're you're panicking and using an item that doesn't actually apply. (laughs) Yeah, nothing happens. Well, in in the past, it has shown me secrets, and this feels secret Like a secret. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Cool. No, so okay, so nothing happens. Only hearing Ross's side of the conversation. How is what? And then you happen? hear the the brain conversation of her viewing She's all that in information in your head. Oh, you're not in the brain. Whoops. <laughs> 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 so you just watch Maya. Uh, Mayev is just watching as Rasa screws her eyes shut and is slowly lowering the egg back down into the bag of holding. And closing up the bag of holding. It was changing color. And Maya's muttering to herself while this is all going on. It's changing colors again. Okay, so there's, there's got to be. I mean, it's Rasa. Of course, she's not lying to me. There's got to be somebody here. And and then she, how is it going to be? How is what going to be? What? <laughs> Rasa essentially receives from me. I trust your judgment up until this point. I will trust it moving forward. Do what you have to do. Um, well. Quick. Go for it. (laughs) I understand that protecting this egg is more than we can do. And this is what she is saying to our visitor. Whoever this lady is, right. Yes. This is a task that I do not believe my family is necessary capable of doing what you are thinking needs to be done so if you truly do believe that it can be raised without ill intent and all the other stuff then yes 
That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And she's like l- looking around at the bushes and like finally settles her eyes on where the air is weird. We, and we, as just as you finally get to where you can focus on that spot, it moves away from Rasa. And Rasa, you see her take a step back and she starts to grow taller. And she'll nod and she'll take another step back and grow even taller to where she is uh, gone from six feet tall to eight feet tall to 10 feet tall to 12 feet tall. And as she's grown taller, the cape part of her dress that was draped off the back of her shoulders kind of hunkers up toward her ears and her neck gets longer and her face gets bigger and she slowly is encased in the scales of the dress just take over her flesh and she slowly morphs into a bronze dragon, full-size motherfucking bronze dragon that Ashley still can't see, uh, that no! Maev still can't see, but Maev can see that there's a lot of bushes being displaced now. And Rasa, if uh, she could see Rasa, is going completely bug-eyed. Yeah. R- and R- she, Rasa! You, you and uh, as she grows and steps back and further and further away from you, she says, a safe child. I will but be unable to watch over you while in Celestia. And then the cape unfurls into dragon wings from behind her. And that familiar grin flashes across her face, which Maya can, can now see. Yes. yes. <laughs> and she winks at you. And then she says, go with my blessing, favored one. And she takes off and flies up, and her form shimmers out of the sky before she's even 60 feet above you. In this moment, your dagger is vibrating like mad. And Ross is barely breathing. Yep. It's a big... Uh, It's vibrating more intently than you've ever experienced. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I will be. Uh, you know her name? I oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've been given her name. I don't know that you have. We don't. We have not. We only know the name above table of the dagger. Very well, Eggy. Yep. No, egg is still with us. Oh, uh, the egg is still in the bag of holding. Dragon, yeah, at, at some point she's egg. probably going to come back uh, with uh, Bahamut's blessing. I think is what she said, um, and then take it somewhere safer she than our possession. But for oh, now, we're still holding it. All right. That that was smiley. No, I know that's okay. Yeah, Ross is a little gobsmacked. I was like, oh, wait. It's Ross. No, Ross is gobsmacked. If you guys are hearing anything, you're hearing the big, oh boy, <laughs> big badabu. Just, just looked over. Good pull. Thank you. Just looked, like, oh, I think they cast feeble mind on her. Oh no, that was smiley, wasn't it? That, that that has to have been smiley. I knew I knew I knew you weren't just talking to a bush the whole time because I'm 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 the one that's not that smart. That has to have been smiley. Is 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 smiley gonna take the the thingy and and keep it safe? It changed colors a lot. Some smiley, yes, but after she gets the blessing of a god. I think it's another god. Like, 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 Foggy and Dusky's moon lady? Or like, Snaps's gray lady? Bahamut? Which she, she was going to appeal to Bahamut? Uh huh. Okay, so another god. Okay. Cool? 
and like the question marks are visible above we're, her head. We're going to continue to protect the egg until she gets a determination. Okay. Let's, it stays let's... in the bag, right? It stay in bag. She said that okay. they can't track it at all when it's in the bag. But let's well, that's let's good. Let's let's go back to the wagon. Okay. I just kind of like wrap share... my arm around her. Did Rasa share the part about I will be unable to watch over you while in Celestia? Not yet. She's still okay. just checking. She's she's still definitely just oh my god that was smiley that I was talking to kind of thing. And and that's about as far as it will eventually she's, she's register, she's but it hasn't registered yet. Okay. And uh, that by the dagger is still wobbling like mad in its sheath, just quaking almost violently against your hip. And you can check your private messages. Um, when I go and like, I'll I'll take the bag from her because she's obviously a little. Uh, as to what just happened, I'll chuck it over one shoulder and then I'll put my arm around her uh, her shoulder and wander us back toward the 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 carriage as we just kind of mumble back and forth to each other. Do I feel her dagger going nuts? Um, uh, perception check. I'm gonna make it a uh, depending on which side her hip she wears it on and what side of her you said you were behind her on the left so i'm assuming you have now cradled her from her left which hip is it on rasa um i feel like it would be on her left because if she's okay, a right so, she wants to be able to just reach across and slash and not yeah, cross, cross yeah cross, so it's yeah. between the two of you and you perceived yeah 15 yeah, so it's you, you could tell it's doing that thing again. Um, but, yeah, that tickles, and probably worse than you remember it. It's it's pretty pretty severe. But I tattoo myself, so that tickles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would give them a very brief rundown when we get back and climb back in and we start traveling again going, so she's gonna talk to a god. Oh. Who's god? Bahamut? Bahahu? Do I know who that is? Bahahu, that's what I said. Oh, that is. So I see you guys had a good time. That was smiley. Mm. Oh, okay, um, you're panicking, Mama. Hmm. Do I know who that is, Bahamut? Um, uh, uh, let's just do a general history history check for everybody. History. See religion if you learned itself? about God. Oh, well, I, I religion. History, yes, honestly. you could do history yeah, or religion, either one. Uh, fourteen. Uh, they're both a negative one for me. No boy. Oh, fourteen. Twenty-two. Are we doing Snaps history or religion? Explain, yeah, You're Snaps called. will explain to everybody who Bahamut is. <laughs> I got a, I got a yeah, 12. I was going to say, because my history is a 10. It's not much. I got a 12. And that's yeah, <laughs> Snaps, Snaps is pretty clear. Dusk probably figured it out. He just hasn't rolled yet. <laughs> uh, I got a 6 on religion. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm a hobo yeah. cleric. I don't know shit. Oh, about yeah, anything. our hobo <laughs> cleric knows all there is to know about the moon fucking maiden. Ask me about the moon maiden. That's what he remembers right now. Other gods, That's other gods. all he remembers right now. But Snaps is aware, clearly understands that there is an entire pantheon of gods that is very uh, geared toward and focused on dragon stuff and dragons and dragon themselves. Dragon. And dragon kin, which Rasa is technically dragon kin. Mm -hmm. So she would have the basic rundown. I still have the egg. Smiley wants to go talk to this god, get his blessing. And if he agrees, they are going to ensure that it is raised. So they're going to hatch it where no evil or 
man or any other influence can, I, I, I don't know. Um, Did we get to name it? We can talk when they pick it up if they agree. Um, okay. um, and I would say about, you know, 30 minutes into the travel as we continue. That's when the, oh shit, she said she can't protect us. What? Uh, Celeste, yeah, like a good 30 minutes in when like the, whoa, what just happened wears off and she can like really start to process. It, there would definitely be a random out of the blue. Wait, shit. <laughs> she, she said that while she's celestial, she can't protect us. So uh, I guess we need to stay out of trouble. We've been How do we stay out of trouble? Well, we've been rolling. Well, we've, we've had a pretty good run. Something we can stay out of. We've, uh, Foggy we've just points at my Ev. Congratulations on speaking the absolute truth. Because, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Truer words well, have never been spoken. We haven't been ambushed in a long time. I'm sure we're fine. Yeah, it is knocking on the wood of the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Naps does this really the ancient dragons of the carriage <laughs> and requested protection? <laughs> Jesus. Well, Jeff. I mean, I, if it's been this thing the whole time and they've been after it, um, knocking on wood, we've we've been okay so far. We will. We just have a little extra knowledge now. And she definitely confirmed that while it's in the bag, she can't sense it at all. So it's safest it's back. there. And, and, oh, and uh, it's not it that's being tracked so much as us, which I think we kind of sort of knew. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. of the creepy fucker. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, we have whole... no need to be any more worried than we were previously. They're already tracking us, so it's fine. But they're tracking us, not the egg. So it's not so much of us taking the egg in and out, but as an additional protection, we probably should just leave it in. Yeah. Egg stays in bag. Uh, yeah, Eggy stays in bag. Smiley's going to talk to God. So, is Smiley a god? I've been of that opinion for a little bit. Well, She's I just going to start doing some math on her fingers. My Ev, I mean, Snaps and I talk to gods all the time. Like it's hard. You of the infinite, inf whatever. Um, you with all the 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 god knowledge there. Who? Snappy. Yes, he's, yeah, she's yeah. Both, I don't know anything. I'm a hobo cleric. Is, is there anything? She was definitely a bronze dragon. I mean, we've tried to think about. Snaps didn't see her before. Nope. Nope. I mean, we've tried to reason out who this is and just determined that we don't have enough knowledge and neither do the people at Oak Arthel because they're not really religious. Um, but there's I, there's none that you thought of. We never we never asked Coria, who did not come from Oak Arthel, of course. You met Acoria well before this shit started, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. But uh, we've we've done some sendings to her since then, but we never did ask her via sending if she knows anything yeah. about Dragony Pantheons. Um, she, in her I think we've tried me. Wart Hurl. Wart Hurl. Wart Hurl. I think we've asked him about can't remember I mean, we might have asked very, him about for a smart guy he's not that smart <laughs> no. definitely not smarter than a professor i'll tell you that god <laughs> Can you it makes me about... no i think we we just determined as they didn't uh what i don't know i don't know uh, know anything about what brass or bronze is she brass or is she bronze 
uh, I wasn't, I believe. I wasn't there. I wouldn't know. <laughs> that was Double checking. I believe her appearance yeah. is bronze when she makes an appearance. I thought she said it was a bronze. Um, so what is brass. that? How, how visual brass. of a Sorry, different it's are brass. they too? She's brass. Brass, 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 is, brass is normally lighter colored than bronze. For the yeah. Bronze is usually more coppery and brass is usually more gold looking. So brass. Uh-huh. What about brass? I can't brass? seem to get to my normal where I usually view details on it. What like are you... My stuff's not coming up. The website I usually use for yeah. getting information. <laughs> and I was asking uh, Snat, or whoever was asking me the question, I was like, what are you asking me about brass? <laughs> brass dragons. Brass dragons. You want to know about brass dragons? Or brass dragon gods? Yeah, I was going to say... Uh, well, gods are usually just yeah. ascended people or other species. So that doesn't really change their nature by any stretch mm. of the well, imagination. More specifically, like, we're trying to deduce an identity here, right? I That's our goal with this conversation? I'm not yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we don't know... No, I'm stupid. We've never asked Smiley her name. Yeah. Would uh, you know... And how much do you know about the Draconic Pantheon? Depends on what side of it and how many and what color and depends if you're, I mean... A brass one that yeah. smiles a lot? Shrugs? <laughs> well, what what color is Astorinian? Uh, hey guys, guess what? It's copper. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. It's brass. It's brass. It's okay, brass. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's brass. Just go through all of the medals. It's brass. All of the medals. When when she's a fairy dragon, she's copper. But when she is a big ass fucking dragon, she's brass. Yeah. So, what color is Astorinian? Uh, I Ooh. wish I I wish I knew. Who oh, no. Oh God. Briggs, please kill the cricket. That's what you're freaking out about over there. <laughs> this yes. whole time, you're like freaking out about the edge of your camera, and I'm like. What's going on? Um, oh, it's cricket. So, did I, who did I stay? Did you just ask the group what color is Astorinian? Yes, he did. He said the name. At which point we all went, right. "Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that?" Um, and it, uh, I imagine that you would, uh, the clerics would go, "Well, <laughs> I mean, like." When the Moon Maiden appears, it's just an aspect of her, so it's not really her. But when the Moon Maiden shows up, she's all silvery and shit. So Dusk has heard because I don't think he's ever actually seen her. No, not the Moon And Maiden when the Veiled One shows up, it's sort of gray and misty, and she's got a fucking veil on, so you can't really see her. But none but, of us know what color Asturian is, do we? It, yeah, but both of the clerics know that what you see when you interact with your goddess is an aspect, a costume, a package that she is currently donning so that you can manage her communicating with her. Well, at the end of the day, what difference does it make? I suppose. I mean, it just would be nice to put a name to a face. Yeah, that's the question. It's a nice name, but that's the closest I could think of. So me, it's not so much as putting a name to the face; it's just knowing what exactly I'm dealing with, and there's no nice way to ask that. If you want, I'll fire off a good goddess. Well, I mean, if you're just looking for an intention, usually you can break it down by the general dragon colorations. Gods don't change the dragon colorations and their general sense of mind. Metallics are usually still good. C chromatics are usually still bad. And gems, I don't think there are any gem gods or goddesses, but they are usually neutral of mind. 
Okay, Dusk would say. Well, I mean, if you didn't already know that, I assumed you did. I, mean, like, I, mean, I can always there, right? fire off a... Outright, if somebody is a god. Um, There's no nice way to say that. Well, I would say... Well, look, knowing yeah, that I'm a, yeah, yeah, you first. Yeah. Just, just knowing what you're dealing with. Well, Here, here's what I'll say because you and I are in a similar boat of only recently engaging with religion. Um, because we're at this point pretty dead set that Smiley's a god. Um, uh, just you're prefacing with us this idea that there should be a nice way to ask what the hell her name is. Preface that with her next time you interact with her. Hey, I don't know if there's a nice way to ask this, so I'm just going to ask it. Who am I actually dealing with, please? I would like an actual name. And if she's offended... Hey, lady, hey, lady what's your name? <laughs> and hey, she's, she's smart enough to know that she hasn't actually told you her name. So, you know. The only other option would be to find a priestly dragonborn who knows everything there is to know about the Pantheon and give them the knife and hope that they can go, oh yeah, no, that's a thing for this thing, and then also pray they don't steal it. So maybe just ask her when you see her next. Can, can only gods go to Mount Celestial? No, anyone can go to any plane. Yeah. She didn't oh, say Mount. Up. She just said Celestia. Oh, oh Celestia. Okay. That was my. So can only gods go Celestia? I'm pretty sure as long as you have a pledge of spell, you could go. But that's Draco speaking, not Foggy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if if Foggy were to say that, I could confirm it in character. Right. Yeah. But okay. uh, but Asta will say like. No, I believe, as far as I can tell, you have the right magics. Because tra planar travel was a very big thing in the Astral Sea. Not many people. Oh, yeah, you know, that people would be your area of expertise. Yeah. People come and go all the time from all of the other planes. So we're thinking God, but can't be 100% sure. Okay. God or missing. Well, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, swims like a duck. It's a goose. And is clearly getting your but, permission to ask on your behalf of a god. <laughs> it's a goose. Yes, but if it transcends planes <laughs> like a god, then I suppose there isn't a duck all along was actually. Does that make Anyways, you a god? Anyway. Um, I don't know. Questions, questions. And he, like, leaves it at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bleed, right? Have you seen me bleed? Not yet. Mm. Yes, we have. Oh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, you, you've, been, you've taken a couple yeah. of licks up in, in the I'm going to stop counting on my fingers. <laughs> grab my tattoo gun from the bench next to me and poke Aste. And back, I'm going to teleport. Wait, have you still been delivery. counting gods this whole time? Yes! <laughs> How many did she get to? Oh, yeah. Lyra, Smiley, Saloon, Veiled One, Tempest, probably Lathander too, because Gerald, and uh, now possibly a dragon god that's not Smiley. So, a lot. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why is there and a as time? As they said. <laughs> One more from his world. <laughs> because both Lane. both both me yeah. and Dusk are being watched by Saloon. Because yeah. we both follow Saloon. So still counting, stops to count, goes to poke him, he disappears. Do you have a god? Uh, do I have a god? That's a good question. I follow one, but I don't okay, know. Okay, so another not... one. So so eight. Did we they... have eight. I don't guys. know if they're following me though. Gods are very busy. They probably aren't listening to me, of all people. And um, to give you the name, it's Aerolith Letharano. That was a lot. What? 
Aerolith Letharanel. It's the elven god of starlight and twilight. That one's kind of crap. Hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn to the corner where somebody was sleeping last. Is she still asleep? Oh, yeah. I'll ask her later. She's napping the whole time. <laughs> At least it appears that she is napping. Would you like to roll a perception check or investigation on that, Mayev? Fog is not gonna. Fog is gonna pull out his lyre and start playing. Investigation is is a better. I'm gonna get all up in her face and try and figure out if she's still asleep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, twenty-two. Investigation. You get right up in her face. She can feel your breath on her nose, and she goes, "Yeah, I'm awake. What? I'm awake." Do you have a god? No. Do okay. you have a god? Or just, just eight. I think, I think just eight. Or possibly seven if mine isn't listening. Who ate what? Don't worry about we th- it. We th- I'm going back to sleep. That music Go- is very pretty. Thanks. And then she leans her head over and. <laughs> Pat her on the head very gently. I can make cheese. <laughs> Me too. Cool. Uh, do we want to have a potty break before we uh, do what comes next? Yes, please. Yes, that's a good idea. Y'all go pee. Go for it. I'm going to go um, too, actually. I will stay. Yeah. Aerolish with Arnold. I'm good at finding the gods that everyone has forgotten about in 5 e. Oh, he didn't kill the cricket. Briggs, kill it. It is your job to do pest control. I see you staring at it. Just kill it. jumps on me, Riggs, the unearthly howl that I will let out is going to traumatize you. So please just kill it. Let it jump on you. <laughs> see if I can get this to play through my uh, ears here. But why are you singing that? What do you mean? Why are you? It's been like forever since that game came out. I know, but it, I, it was a. It's a thing that I think sounds good on guitar. So I was like, "Yeah, that's the I melody. I'll hum real quick." I don't think you understand. That game came out in 2006, buddy. Yeah, it's been I know. Almost 20 years. <laughs> And it's the song that comes to my brain first when I think about Legend of Zelda music, because Twilight Princess was my first fucking Zelda game. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's a good one, though. I still feel like I should have checked to see if there was scrolls, but whatever. Meh. Yeah. But what if I missed a really good one? Gosh. You know what's going to happen if you missed a really good, really important scroll? Our mm. DM is a kind human being and will just go, so that scroll was never in that shop and was instead in this shop and put it in front of us. What scroll are we hoping to run into? I uh, just, I forgot to check for scrolls at the shop. So I was like, blah. And I was like, eh, whatever, I'll just check next time. We did get you all of the ink and paper yeah. you could get in the town, okay. Yeah. I got all the ink and paper, but I don't have any scrolls to scribe shit down. <laughs> Fucking moon moon. <laughs> uh, joy is hospitality. Hospitality. Lyra is hospitality, not joy. Yeah, sorry. You have not moved. Was your first death is to... wrong too. Death is wrong too. Death is supposed to be mourning. Did you kill it? That is true. I was going with simple. Mm. 
No, you did Who's not. Who's war? Tempest? Fine. Isn't Tempest war? I have to work through justice. Why is Tempest watching over you guys? What? She put it in the list. Tempest? What is it? Tempest. Yeah, what Tempest is your is list war? of deities? Tempest is war. That's yeah, why is Tempest, Tempest watching over you guys? That must be somebody else back in your clan, Maev. This guy. This guy right here. You follow that Tempest? Me? Yeah, that's... I, I you see, scroll that, up a little, you'll see. So. Yeah, if you scroll up a little in that, uh, you'll see alignment category, Faith, Tempest, questioning everything. This guy. I'm so confused. Oh, Which yeah, that's, 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 that's a, yeah. And I will have you know that Letharanel's domain is not starlight. It is knowledge and light. Mm -hmm. It's just specifically... You just said starlight and twilight. Yeah, twilight it's, and that's just like... And Elven God, particularly twilight and starlight, he also considered a god of the sun, moon, and some other stuff. Yeah, and then if you look down in that little I link... With the veiled one, death, mourning, grief, guardian of bonds between mortal and deities, you know, it's... They, they, gods are more than one thing, come on. They're messy. Gods are messy, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Whoops. Back. Why? Why is my shit not caught? There we go. Grumble, grumble, and grumble. Lathander would be <laughs> her husband. I'm pretty okay. sure I got Lathander right. He's the Dawn. Um, I think he's like the male version of the fertility god. Earth and Point is, dusk and foggy or moon moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Joy was correct. She, uh, Lyra, is also known as the goddess of joy. What I do, I, I, I drink and I write recaps and I know things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't do any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> moon moon <laughs> moon bros Riggs I love you very much but I'm going to need you to go hunt and kill the cricket it is your job that was your first mistake was thinking the cat was going to do anything today <laughs> mm. he literally went Give you a princess wave. <laughs> it's funny how many of these deities on this list are labeled lesser deity. <laughs> yeah, because worshiping one of the greater deities is for people who do that. Dangerous. <laughs> Not just that, but it's it's for it's for people who who aren't as. I'm in danger. <laughs> It's for people who, who are mainstream. We're not mainstream. <laughs> hey, look, we're in a minor continent. We got minor gods, but we got major we problems, are. okay? Major we problems. Got major problems. We got 99 problems, and gods are like seven of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back in the wagon. Snaps is reading a book. Ah, stays flump thumbing through his book because her their Amity's book. Taking a nap. Samity's taking a nap. Foggy's playing some lovely music. Uh, I have a the remaining six hours of travel today, uh, as wine drinker and Jezebel <gasps> begin to uh, approach their limit for the day. Um, Dusk, and I'm assuming Rasa is up on top with Dusk, uh, they get a glimpse uh, in the distance of a small collection of structures nestled against the road at the point where the shoreline and therefore road takes a sharp turn back on itself. 
in a northeasterly direction. So I think I still have the map up. So yeah, as you're pulling up on this side of this town over here, the road is stretching back to go the other way and they've just sort of nestled themselves in that crook in the road. It looks, it looks, new town, new town, like this. New map, new map, new map, new city. Uh, while we are on the road, can I thumb through my lore hole primer with intent to possibly learn a bit about Asterini and the color, see if I can confirm anything that we asked before? Um, Lorehold lo Primer is... Lorehold Primer a... is history and religion checks. History and religion checks. Fabulous. Give me just a moment. The answer is yes, you may. Awesome. And, um... I don't know what check it would be for successful research. He's doing his research. Research. Uh, investigation, maybe? It's intelligence. Just a straight intelligence check? Intelligence. Yeah, you could just do a straight intelligence check, sure. Gotcha, so I do not add my lore hole primer to that. Because... Um, it, your lore hole primer gives you it gives me a benefit? Yes, so it says, if you make an intelligence history or intelligence religion check while holding the primer, you can expend a charge to give yourself a d4 bonus to check. There you go. That would definitely apply. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So that's... So that guidance and 12, so that's 3, 3, 12 plus... If we go for either religion or history, I have a plus 8 in both. That's going to be... 26. I will give you with a 26 hmm. clear and unmitigated awareness that Asterinian, formerly known as Halal, mm -hmm. messenger to, uh, I think it was Io, now known as Bahamut, okay. lesser deity, uh, material plane aspect is a copper dragon. A copper dragon. Yeah. Brass dragon. Not a brass. Brass dragon. Brass, brass dragon. Brass, brass Copper dragon. fairy dragon. <laughs> Copper fairy dragon. Brass dragon dragon. Brass dragon. And then, uh, I guess once I have that information, you guys see me use that, like, little lower hold primary thing. You see, like, little pages fly around me for a second as they go back in. It's like, okay. So there is a decent chance that that you just encountered a avatar of a Sterinian. He like says it in that cadence to Snaps. Or Rasa, or whoever was talking to the thing. Rasa. 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 So your offhanded you guess was correct? The sunroof. There's a potential because I checked with my primer and it said that the, uh, the worldly avatar would be a brass dragon. Okay. And she said she had to do something with Bahamut, yes? And yep. Asterinian is the messenger of? Okay. So there's a good chance you just interacted with... Yeah. Just throwing that out there for that's worth you. And he goes back to reading. Oh, <laughs> now you have a name to do reading on next time you're in a library. Looking at Rasa. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to stick with smiling. Or we could stick what with What was that, Sarah? No, Ross is just pondering it all, and she goes, so a god that likes practical jokes. No. Oh. A god that likes change. Uh, Every time I do a joke on one of you, my blade goes crazy. Well, then do more jokes? I don't know what to tell. What, what am I supposed <laughs> to glean from that? I, I've is, put, she I, is that chaotic, why it tickled? Chaotic leaning, and she does enjoy yeah. uh, mischief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I guess, do more tricks. And um, actually, with you said you got a 22 or a 25? A 26, I think 26. it was. 
Yeah, you could also just offhandedly remark that, you know, if you wanted to make her like you, learn by doing. That's like her whole thing. Learn by doing. Okay. Yeah, I could I could offer that to Ross as well. Yeah. yeah. I'll offer that to her. Yeah. If you want to uh if you want to impress Smiley a little more, learn by action. <clears throat> dookie dookie. And so that hey, conversation dude, that happened. <laughs> so that conversation happened as you were trundling down the road for an additional six hours. And now you're glimpsing in the uh, relatively short distance this collection of um, structures is really the best way it could be described. Um, it's less of a village and more of a settlement. Um, it looks as you approach like some people have just stopped at the side of the road and decided, well, that's enough traveling. Let's live here. There's nothing particularly lovely about the area. It's sandwiched between the sea and the foothills. Uh, and the sea along this area is full of vegetative debris. The beach is covered in shit. Um, and it just piles up and it kind of smells a little bit um, along the slim bit of beach that is here. Um, it, it's obviously this pointy bit sticking out of land is getting pummeled by different currents and waves come at it in varying directions and it churns up a lot of crap. So there's a lot of vegetative shit on the beach being steaming up a bit in the midday sun that is now as the sun is setting, just you, you just see a little bit of steam coming off it. Um, Question. Uh, da -da -da, debris piled up, stinks to high heaven. Da -da -da -da. This is certainly not a trade center. There are no structures that you could identify for merchants or shops of any kind. They don't even really have an inn or a, a hotel or a restaurant. There is, however, a very large dilapidated barn sort of in the middle of these weird lean to like structures. Uh, it's it's ramshackle. It's in the middle of the settlement. And the number of tents and structures that you can see, there's a couple of actual canvas tents. But there's also several structures that look like pieces of wood that have been leaned together and tied with a rope. And then a big piece of sailcloth poured pulled over it and tucked, uh, held off in the distance with a rock. And then, you know, five feet out in front of that is a little tiny campfire. And then there's another weird structure that looks like it might have one day been the side of a wagon, but now it's just sort of leaned up against another piece of wood that might have been the side of a wagon one day, and, it, and they've been tied together. And then there's another tarp across the top of that, that kind of structure. Um, I have a question. So, do, 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 barn, middle, locals. You imagine by what you can see as you approach that you're looking at a community of people that's like 25, maybe 30 people in total, including some small children that you can see race, racing around a little bit. You have a question. Does it immediately remind me of home? No. Okay. Your nomadic clan was a did nomadic clan. Settle. It, and they, then they, did they built buildings and they, they had a real village that they developed. Okay. But even when they were nomadic, they were better prepared than these people. Okay. Like these, this, is this people, this stuff is battered, battered. Oh. Uh, the outside of the barn, there's several slats missing. I mean, this is a mess. It's it's a bit of a mess. Uh, if you listen closely, uh, you might hear a banjo playing in the near distance. Um, and as you pull up to this area here. I'm assuming you're just going to keep going. 
uh, although Wine Drinker and Jezebel have gotten to the end of their 12-hour day uh, just as this place came into view. So you've pushed them a little further to get here. Um, and as you arrive in this general vicinity, you begin hearing loud bickering uh, in this general vicinity in here. Um, loud bickering at the center of the road as you approach the tenement. There is a, an older gentleman that has just indicated that a middle-aged man that he is speaking with might be in truth an anatomical orifice related to the process of elimination. And the oh. response was a gesture made with both hands that is commonly known as a universal sign of insult. And one woman continues to reach out to the older man and seems to be trying to ease the argument with words like community and family. And uh, the emotional testosterone-fueled exchange is degrading rapidly. Um, and the other women and children seem to have come out of their little ramshackle tenty things and approached the pair who are arguing in the street. And uh, the women and children are either yelling at them to stop or egging them on. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, as you look upon the scene, nobody seems to be paying much attention to you as you were driving by. Uh, they are human. But they are an unusually short collection of humans. And they all do look a lot alike. Uh, you might think that maybe there was some halfling hanky-panky in the past that has introduced a short and hairy gene into a very limited human gene pool. Oh. Are By we all on the same page with what we're yeah. looking at? <laughs> By the Great. sense of them insulting each other. I, it just makes me sound like they're dwarves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, the older guy with gray thinning hair has huge mutton chops and several missing teeth. And his point of view in the Stramash was, we just need to leave it be. Stay safe and wait it out. The younger one, uh, by looking at him, could actually be this old guy's son. They look like a younger, he looks like a younger version of the other one. Same mutton chops. Uh, his point of view in the argument has been, we've got to leave this place. It's no good here anymore. Our children aren't safe. The older woman who was trying to calm the thing down eventually does <laughs> take note of your wagon and warns them they got to give it up, and, and we all got to get inside before the whack comes. And then she scoops up a baby in her arms and runs toward the barn. Before the what comes? Whack. The whack. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. They got to get inside before the whack comes. Uh-huh. Okay. <sighs> you know, I have lived in West Virginia for a year. And I still have trouble understanding West Virginian. Mm -hmm. uh, like, but we have very clearly just rolled into West Virginia. Uh, or Louisiana. Yeah. Any, like, anywhere like, within the Bible you know. Belt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, App I, Appalachia comes to mind, yeah. Yes, Appalachia. So, so I'm going to hear... Welcome home. <laughs> I'm going to hear them arguing, and I'm going to look to the groom and be like, I know we've basically killed our horses, but I'm not wanting to stop here. <laughs> They're gonna want us to do something. You already know it. Dusk is just singing Bye. Country Roads Take <laughs> me home. We just you. hear something about children not being safe. Yeah, that's why. What yes, why, with. yes, you did. Our children aren't safe, is what one of the <laughs> voices said. Yep. I just cast a direction in the amethyst. I just cast a glance at the direction of the amethyst herself. sisters. Are we doing something about it or no? Safe from what? That's what I thought. Uh, another show? woman who's got a kid in her arms and is shuffling past the arguing men and yells, Barver, you just give it up. We gotta get in. The wad is coming. Uh... And uh, she gestures. What's the white? 
in this general direction and says, you got to get in the barn. I'm going to get in the barn. What's the white? <laughs> when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Uh, I just noticed the map changed and I just saw movement, I think. Oh. Mm -hmm. yep. So sure these did. two men are like oh, on the shit. verge of punching it out. Oh, okay. Uh, would they be arguing? These two? Okay. Do you want me to separate the, the two them? dudes that were in the yeah. Do you want to these two are arguing and Yeah, um, they're actually out here in the street. Sorry. Here we go. There we are. They're out here about to get into a fist fight. Stop. My Evan is going to Yeah, my Evan and Russ are both going to like immediately just Grab them, yank them I mean, apart. Is little for a dragonborn, but she's still gonna try and. <laughs> yeah, these guys are no more than four, four and a half feet tall. So I might have a head on them. Woohoo! Um, yeah. Maya has to stoop down a little bit to grab one by the shoulders, pull him away from the other one. Stop it! What is the white as we start walking into the barn? <laughs> so everybody's headed into the barn. Working that way. Helped us with the horses. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And so I we would don't want to suggest... leave the horses with whatever the white is. Yeah, so you're going to leave the wagon out here and yeah. pull the horses into the barn. Uh, somebody's going to complain about that because, you know, that's weird that you're bringing animals inside, but whatever. They're complaining that we're bringing animals into a barn? What is <laughs> That's just white? weird. But um, with well, her, uh... Yeah, go ahead. So uh, several of the people who have come into the barn, you now realize they have their children with them, but they also seem to have bundles of wood and tarps and rope. Like they've taken as much as they can of their structure down and dragged it into the barn with them. Mm -hmm. Wanna fill me in? What's the white? All right. I'm just going to give you sentences speckled out from the collection of people in this space. Okay. There's this crazy fog that rolls in about lunchtime every day. Fog. Okay. Okay. What's so wrong about the fog? People get crushed and frostbitten sometimes, and, and then sometimes there's slashing injuries, too. You just don't want to be in it. Every time we put something up, it gets squished flat. Are there any more children outside that I need to know about? Um... Um, I the necklace, and necklace somebody's looking around, and one of the argument guys is pulling the gate, the doors of the barn closed, and starting to put the bar down. And somebody yells, "Wait, wait! Maisie's still out there. Someone's got to get that girl in here. You, you just gonna try and lock that girl out in the white? Come on, Sonny boy. Somebody's got to do something." And he's Where? like freaking out that somebody Point? named Maisie is still out there. Point, Maya direction, Maisie, where? Maya Out has there, remained I don't outside. know, she's supposed to be in here. What'd you say, Maya? Maya remained outside because of her necklace and she it looks just like some weird air that's coming at her. So if, she, if I was able to hear that name, I'm just going to start screaming that name, asking where she is. Yeah, if I see Maya picking a direction and doing that kind of thing, I'm picking the other direction. <laughs> or, like, another direction, I should say. Like, if if it looks like Maya's doing one of these angles, I'll, like, hit this way and just start shouting oh, that shit, name. It's moving. Oh, yeah, and it's moved fast. Like, just I'm burning key done. points, step of the winding, like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dashing from building to building, screaming this name, looking for this child. I would uh, use thaumaturgy to shout the child's name. Oh yeah, that'll get you heard out to 300 fucking feet. <laughs> oh lord. Yeah, that shit's moving fast. Ah, 
Can that stop being? I was say, I'm trying to see if I have anything to do with this. Anybody still inside? Not nope. of us, I don't think. Okay. So you're not going to get any more of this information. <laughs> Lovely. Three. <laughs> Y'all yeah. just tore off outside. Yep. We went searching for the child. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't actually see if uh, I saw. Okay, I so I checked everything up top your already. Where tokens are? I'm trying to figure out where your tokens are because I have to be on the map layer to change the map. Spread out. This is wonderful. This is great. Maev <laughs> is down here. Great, Maev, you're starting to hear banging and crashing sounds from this general direction. Yeah, good, good. Love that. Cool. I'm going to just let myself go into a rage and charge through the fog into this direction. And I, I will end up going through the said fog. And I'm screaming, what, what was the name? Maisie? Maisie. Great. Uh, could you, uh, I guess, roll for initiative <clears throat> Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> in in uh Yeah, do we do this in roll twenty or or Dean to Beyond or No. No, just on paper. Okay. Fifteen. Mm. Yeah. No. Thirteen plus two? Seven. Thirteen plus three is sixteen. Honkers. Jesus Christ, don't bring that back into my brain. Pardon. Put that there for you, Mama. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh. 25. Oh, I don't like that number. Nope, don't like that at all. It's a pretty big number. Is that an Oreo cakester? Uh huh. I'm jealous. Nom, nom, nom. I'm missing nom, somebody. Nom, nom, nom. No, you're not. 18 for snaps. Snaps, Foggy, Aste, Rasa. Oh, Samity's in the barn. <clears throat> Samity's in the barn. Thank you for making that announcement. Yeah. Samity's uh, in the barn. My M is 17. Uh huh. Of course, I didn't leave enough room for that. Is that everybody? I don't know. Uh, I can't see your pen. Six of us. Snap. Chat. Seventeen. Mayev. Sixteen. Augie. Yep. Fifteen. Aste. Aste. Dusk is eleven. And I Rasa knew I was missing somebody. Seven. Dusk and Rasa. Did not roll this anymore. But... Okie dokie. Great, great, great. I told you you had gust and you ignored so, me. Uh... See next page for encounter options depending on what the party did. They fucking <laughs> ran out into the goddamn fog. Um... So one Only of your choices one of was members. Yeah. One of your choices was get out of Jodge and head along the road toward <laughs> Although to season. be fair, the fog seems to be rolling along the section of road we'd have had to take to leave. That does seem true. to be the case, yes. And let's be honest, you said there was a kid missing. Uh, was there really any other option? But Aste didn't even want to get out of the wagon. Aste was like, we could just keep going. We don't have just to saying. do nothing here. Just saying. Okay. I knew they were going to uh, make us do something. Uh, na, 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 You've taken up with this, nice errant do-gooders here. That, <laughs> this. Great. Sure. Things are happening. 
Right. This goes over here. I need emotional support, Riggs. I know you're comfy and sleepy, but... All right, here we go. But some shit's about to go down, kitty cat. <laughs> and there is number one. Fun fact. Uh, cats yes. do not meow at other cats. They only meow at humans to communicate with them. They yowl at each other, but they don't merp. Well, they'll, they'll purr, they'll spit, and they'll hiss at each other, but they won't meow at each other. When they go meow, that's for humans only. Because they think we're kittens. I think we're big cats, and that changes their uh, the way they think about things a lot, apparently. Okay, so... Uh... Uh, Maev, where's your token? I see your token. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. I oh, went cool. through the fog. Right. Raging and went through the fog. Raging went through the fog. And you got a glimpse of some shit before you stepped out of the fog. And then... Oh, wonderful. Yep. Yeah, and then, um... Um... This thing that you got a glimpse of when you were in the fog is now, uh, yep, yeah, it's, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, oh, no, a, ni a nine doesn't hit you. No, it does not. No. Oh, but uh, 24 probably does. Th that so, would, in fact, hit me just a little bit. So, uh, I got to poke this. Is there a thing on your screen now? Yep, there sure is. Yep, there, there is. is. There he is. Yeah. 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 That is this, which... You can't see it when it's in the fog, but as it dives out of dive bombs out of the fog to hit you, it misses you the first time it swings its way out of the fog, but the second time it comes out, it's a 24 to hit. And that it hits does. Just a little bit. Yep, yep, yep. One, two of these. That would be nine, 14, oh, 17 mm. points of cold damage. Oh, okay. I'm not resistant to that. And my mouse just died. Oh, <laughs> turn it back on. Oh, no, don't die. Don't die, mouse. Don't die. That was the most inopportune moment to die, mouse. Literally dead, dead. Taking the battery out. Shake it. Bring it back in. Okay, 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 okay. And then... Layer. GM layer. Why won't it do it? What is happening? Token, token layer. I'm on the token layer, but I can't click mm -hmm. on anything. I'm going to try refreshing my screen. I hope it doesn't fuck things up too bad. Okie dokie. No, really. Refresh. Let's think about that. Zooming out. Zooming out. This guy now needs to go back in the fog so you can't see him. But I can't click it. Layer. GM layer. It won't go. Three bells against you. Destroy it. And I can't move it. I am on the fucking token layer. Now I can't switch to the GM layer. I'm going to quit roll 20 and come back. Okay. That seems like a plan. Please hold for technical difficulties. I think it's an ad on this other tab is like sucking up my bandwidth or something. Oh, don't. 
don't do this to us. We just want to play a fucking game on the token layer. Right click layer, GM layer. It disappears into the fog. But for some reason, I cannot switch to the GM layer. It has disappeared back on to my the map screen. Layer. Yeah, it let me move it to the right layer, but now it won't let me switch to the other layer. Oh, there. Okay, I moved. Okay. Great. It disappears back into the fog. So that happened. Oh, That's round did one it... for the blue one. Question. The blue it one? Ha it, it had to leave my Oh, yes, yes, it did. Or yes, it yes, okay. yes, it did. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, all right, here we go. Let's try. Frit it and kill it in one hit. Uh, dirty 20 to hit. Yes. That is a one of these. I totally know how to play this character. We're all spread out, so I don't need to really worry about that thing right now. Okay, one of these. Computer. All right. What the hell is happening? Uh, 14 points of I slashed at the fog with my axe. Great. Interesting. Uh, this. On the token layer. I can't switch to the token layer. On the GM layer. This thing. 115 minus 14. Oh, lovely. <laughs> There we go. That happened. Then, uh, from this direction, I'm on the wrong layer. From this direction, over here, maybe I need to close all these other windows. From this direction over here, that is the slowest ping on the planet, uh, you hear this horrible wailing sound <clears throat> uh and from over here from that general vicinity you don't know exactly where from okay. six oh 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 where is everybody uh one two three four five no uh so you just hear it but nothing happens Okay. That's great. That was great. I love that. That was great for you. I have a feeling we should have stayed in the barn, guys. <laughs> that was great for you. And then. No, we have to get the kid. Oh, come on. One, and we will solve their two, their foggy three, white four, bullshit. Five, six, seven, eight. And then from this direction, you hear another sound way, way closer. Um, and I need you, Maev only, I think. Yep, mm -hmm. only Maev. And quite possibly a dude in the barn. One, two, three, four, five. And a couple of people in the barn. Uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, well, that's gonna go swimmingly. Is this the? Is it a harmful gas or vapor effect? Give me the die. Fine, give me this die. Um. Mister. Uh, it's gonna affect your psyche. It is psychic damage. It is a uh wave. The sound carries with it. Anguish. Absolute mm. anguish. Mm, okay. That's going to be a nine. 
cool, cool. Four. One, two, three, four of those. Four, oh, boy. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 points of psychic damage. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. And you have the incapacitated condition until oh. the end of your next turn. Oh. Okay. And that was this one. And this one yelled at nobody because he didn't move. Great, great, great. Things are happening. Things are happening. Snaps! What are you going to do? Um. So Aste took kind of a wider mm -hmm. arc. Um, Snaps was checking tents closer to the barn, yelling for Maisie, uh, using her kitty paws, stopping, pausing, uh, looking around, keeping running. She ended up over here uh, with the fog rolling in, and I assume I probably heard Maev get hit, or I know she's over there. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Her screams for Maisie are going to turn into screams for Maev, and she's going to fucking engage kitty paws <laughs> and run 60 feet. <laughs> like over here. Uh, uh, okay. Kitty Paws Dash? I assume I don't. Kitty <laughs> Paws Dash. Yeah, um, the tab tabaxi thing. Love it. Looking at the wording on that because I'm still kind of far away. Where is it? One feet line agility. You move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of your turn. Once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you move zero feet on one of your turns. Um, don't see anything, can't do anything. Not close enough yet to my Ev. Uh, can't you dash? And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and dash, but that doesn't leave me with many options for this turn. Um, I'm gonna end up over there by my Ev, trying to stay slightly out of the fog, mm. although I'm sure it's about to roll over us. Uh, that's my action and movement. Spirit zero was no. I wanted to do spirit guardians, but that's like just spell. Yep. I could do spiritual weapon, but I don't see anything. Fuck it, I'm gonna do spiritual weapon in case I see something with my bonus action. Eight. We're just gonna do a second level spiritual weapon. Oh. Movement, action dash, bonus action. Oh, spiritual weapon. Do I even have your spiritual weapon on this map? Uh, no, by golly, I don't. I'll have to go get one. When was the last time you saw your spiritual weapon? Hmm. <laughs> uh, Dusk looks, oh, here it is, here it is. I found it, I found it. And yeah, the token layer. I'm going to put it over here. And I found, and then and I have found my of looking fairly rough, I'm sure. A little rough. You got an ouchie. Yeah, you, you have found my of looking not in tip top shape Poppy. and stunned, essentially. Where are we at? We're on this map. And the spiritual weapons are going to go here. And this one is going to go to the token layer. There you go, ma'am. You got a thing. Got a thing. You see your thing? I'm all... all yeah, right. I'm gonna <laughs> pop it over like here ish. Ready to cool. move it towards something, but that's my turn. I'm just gonna take a swing at the mist right there. Because okay. I get a free swing. Go on ahead. It. Yep, go ahead. Roll for an attack. <laughs> that's gonna be a no. Uh okay. what is my uh eleven? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All righty. That happened. Snaps all done? Yep. Maya. What are you going to do? I am, in, I am incapacitated, so I am going to stand there. Yep. 
and be very glad when after my six seconds has lapsed, I suddenly feel as though I can do things again because now Snaps is very close to me and I just got hurt by this shit. But my ghosty guys are out. And 5e incapacitated is what, again, can't take actions or reactions. Did you still get a bonus action? No. Okay. I can't do shit. <laughs> it doesn't like, restrict your movement, apparently. In 2024's PHP, it doesn't. Oh, uh, but it used to? I, I have to, I'd have to check. Because me and Greg were just, me and Greg were just talking about it actually. How like, new incapacitated doesn't. Uh, Indy five e. Let's see, incapacitated. An incapacitated, incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions. So she still gets she a bonus action. She can still move. She still gets a bonus action and she can still move. Which hey. is weird. That's very weird. It's <laughs> actually really weird. What the fuck. So, yeah. do you have a bonus action? I guess it would allow you to rage. But I do not need to because I was injured. And therefore, my rage maintains. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, know what other bonus actions you might have. Not very many. Because um, I had to close the browser, browser window that had all of your character sheets open. Creature within 30 feet. Um, I think Snaps is the only one within 30 feet of me. Yeah, Snaps is the only one within 30 feet of me. Um, yeah, there, there's not really anything that I, I, I could do that would okay. be helpful. And you're not going to run blindly back into the fog. Or run mm. blindly away from the fog. No, because I'm not about to leave okay. Snaps by herself over here. Got it. All righty. Foggy, what are you going to do? My Evan Snaps are over there yelling at each other. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Foggy, go into the foggy. Oh, gosh, do I just go into the fog and help fight the damn thing, or do I look for the kid? It hurts. <laughs> foggy, foggy. Is my mic off? You're alive. No, we hear you. Yeah, we heard you. We heard you waffling and mincing about your choices. Uh... I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Uh, where the fuck's my character sheet? There it is. Give it its own window. Thank you. Uh, fuck it. Went in Rome. Uh, movement speed is 40. I'm going to kick on the boots. Uh, this will double my movement speed and convert it into flight. So I have 80 feet of movement. I'm going to go right here. Can I have you move my token for me? Token layer. Grab Foggy. Put his ass right there. Thank you. Uh, now that I'm in the fog, what the shit do I see? In, I assume, um, that space. There be a foggy in the fog. It is white. Can't see my hand in front of the goddamn face? Not really, no. Well, yeah, you could see your own hand, maybe. But that's about it, really. It's, it's fucking white. The white is very white. Hmm. Uh, am I high enough level Sun Soul Monk to do this thing? I don't think I am. I think I need one more level of Sun Soul Monk to do the thing. 
Yeah, I still don't get burning hands yet. I need one more level of it. Damn it! Do you have, like, blind sense or anything? Uh, I don't believe I do, no. I have dark vision out to 60 feet, and that's it. Womp womp. Indeed. So, um... Damn it, this was not helpful I mean, at all. Are you, al are you allowed to hold an attack action for if you feel or see something within five feet of you? Is yeah, that not that's, a logical that's, choice? That's what yeah, I was going to do. Right I on. just was annoyed that that's what I was limiting myself to. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my bonus action. I'm going to go into a rage. I would like Angry. to rage. And what variety of rage are we looking at? We are looking at... I mean, uh, nobody else can no, see it, but I'm just mean, curious. Probably. For the benefit of an unseen <laughs> audience, uh, we're going to get the, uh, what is generally speaking, in my opinion, the, uh, the, the, the least useful of them, but will probably be the most useful here. We're going to go with the tail. Hey. Um, he sprouts a big old tail. Oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't, because I can't see... I, Am I to assume that I will only see something if it enters these eight spaces? Yeah. So the fact that this weapon has ten feet of range wouldn't matter? Right. I mean, you can see five feet from your face. If you want to wail in the direction on the off chance that there's something in that direction, you're welcome to do so. I have no complaints about you doing 10 feet reach, but you only have 5 feet of visibility, so you'd be doing it blind if it's not within 5 feet of you. Yeah. Alright, yeah, screw it. I'm not going to hold my action. I'm just going to do it right now. Or like poor Maiev, it comes dive bombing at you out of the fog. If you were not in the fog, then you mm. get a good look at it. No, yeah, I'll, I'll, hold my, I'll hold my attack action and I'll swing if something gets within range. Okay. If you see it, you will smack it. Yeah, and it will be with the tail, which will do 1d8 plus 3 plus 2. It does some shit. It does. Great. Uh, Aste, what are you going to do? Hi. So for the sake of fairness, do I even know what the hell's going on? Like, it's, uh, I'm, I am you more than 100 feet away a from clear, this. Yeah, you have a clear understanding that there is a child or at least they spoke about her as if she were a child, mm -hmm. out in the fog or out not in the barn where they expected her to be. Uh, and the party that you are traveling with has decided to run out into the world go looking for someone named Maisie. And there is this huge cloud of fog that is rapidly uh, approaching the area. How do I have a feeling like Maisie's a chicken? <laughs> I have a bad feeling that Maisie's a freaking chicken. Well, they gave us weird looks for bringing horses into the barn, so I feel like it's probably a good yeah, chance it's not a chicken. But some people say that chickens are family. I'm just... Oh, Jesus. Ah, uh, well, if I don't know anything about what's going on, I really just go to the next ten like I was doing, right? Yes. I mean, Steps was right I mean, over n here near you, and she started screaming for Maya and fucking took off. To be fair, that, that was is when true. she yeah, was did witness Snaps do 60 that. feet away through a tent. But Snaps was right near you. Oh, okay. So you heard and saw Snaps react, and then Snaps ran straight north. Yeah. Oh. Then. Oh. Let's see, what can I do with this? I think I have an idea of how I could make this happen. So here's what I'll do. Then if I'm if I'm allowed to catch up and I'm like, okay, I know it's a good time I can head on out. Then what I'll do is I will where the heck is it? There we are. Then some traits, class features. Uh, yeah, we will, uh, yeah, freak it. Grumble, 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 grumble. There we go. Okay, I will, uh, 
Ah. Subtle cast Misty Step. That way, I, and then I will move. So we will do Misty Step to 30. We will do the subtle cast teleportation of the Astral Shard. And then I will run my thirty ass feet. And that's physical movement, that last 30 feet. That last 30 feet is physical movement. So Ross is standing there and suddenly Aste is standing next to you and then he runs the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Professor. He just sort of appears right next to you and then he runs. Sheet. <laughs> and that was all with the bonus action and movement. A good time. <laughs> all done? Uh, I still have an action. So what I'm going to do is... Can, do it, does it take an action to hold an action? Is that how that works? Yeah. Okay. You can hold your action. You just have to tell me what action it is that you are holding and what the trigger is that will make it happen. Yes. So... If anything pops out of that fog, I'm going to I'm going to vortex warp. <laughs> okay, does vortex warp utilize resources? Uh, vortex warp does not utilize resources. It is vocal and somatic only. But it does use a spell slot. It uses a spell slot. Specifically so a second you, level. Yeah, so it would use the spell slot even if the trigger doesn't happen. Okay, I'll use up the spell slot now then. Okay. That's fine. So if something pops out of that uh, fog at any place that, that I can see, I'm going to Vortex Warp it. To you. Okay, and Vortex Warp, you'll tell me what that does when it happens. Oh, uh, yes. So we'll do that cool. then. That's fine. Found one complete for Aste. Uh, Dusk, what are you going to do? All right. There seems so... to be some shit going on over by the fog. I, uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> You mentioned something about something coming from this way, or is it only auditory uh, or visual? It was auditory, and that direction was for my F's benefit. All right. For your benefit, the sound came from this direction. All right. Okay. Am I missing pings? Am I not looking at the Could right be. part of the map? Pings. I was I pinged up ah. in the cloud. Ah. So where from your point of view it came from somewhere over this way, and from his point of view it came from somewhere up here. Okay. Just giving generalized directions. I'm going to sense quite. Anyone else just see me get pawed in the face? I don't I think any of close enough. As, as snaps may have seen something from where she was. I don't know if Oste saw it. it does I, I more, apologize. I it does make a being... straight beeline. Oh. He's going to go straight there if that's not too troubling for his route. Yeah, it's fine. You can hop over and stumble over barrels and shit. Squeeze between the barrels and the wagon. Mm -hmm. And um, as a precaution of the violence that was mentioned, he's going to toss out a spirit guardians at level four. Centered on himself, Are obviously. You Turning on the aura, and I will make it visible to everyone. Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, I can do that, I think. Yes. Uh, 15. And then I go in and mark it as player permission, see and edit. Oh, it was already that way, so everybody else can see it? Yep. No. Love well, that. Nope. No? Nope. <laughs> I try again. 
tent. Player permissions, see and edit. Huh? Does that do it? Save. I mean, and leave and come back. Nothing. That fixes it. For aura two no, or aura Oh, nope. There's uh, there's oh, there's I was doing the wrong aura. Sorry. I used the other one. For there I just go. assumed he would use aura number one. What? Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so that happened. And then what happened? I, that's all I can do. That's uh, it? I okay. Think, I think. Let me check my double. <laughs> Action. Bonus. Uh, no. Word, not got a hidden step, not steps tonight. Nope, I'm done. All righty. Big crashing noises coming from over here. I guess Dusk would continue shouting the name of the child. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Nope. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. The whole background go. just turned white. Oh, oh God. Geez. Yeah. <laughs> if there's enough white along the edge of the map, it changes what you see. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. That was okay. a little distressing. It's not terrifying at all. Not terrifying at all. And this is now, and that banging and crashing and horrible noises that you hear is now, it started out over here and then traveled, broadcast to others, yes. It started out over here and it traveled this way. And so the most recent bit of noise you heard was about right here. That's real close to foggy, just saying. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. And then Rasa, what are you gonna do? Just as confirmation, the noise that we heard, was it just the crashing and things like that? Or was it actually like a humanoid, like yell scream kind of thing? It was just, uh, you imagine that the structures that are, are now in the fog, are being smashed. I okay, but we did not hear like an audible scream or anything like that. Uh, not just now. You did earlier, but not now. Did earlier, but not. Not a good sign. Okie dokie. Alrighty, we are going to move, I guess. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And then we're going to probably dash with bonus action. And okay. 15, 20, 25, 30. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I said okay. stop. Um, I want to use chromatic warding as my action. Okay. And I am immune to cold for one minute. Okay. And there is a monster in front of me. Uh, in the same space mm -hmm. as you, actually. You are in its space. I am fucked. Because <laughs> that's everything I can do right now. Because I used my bonus action to dash, and I used my action to do chromatic warding. Ah, okay, 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 cool, so cool, cool. I, I, I'm just face to face with this and go, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yep, and yep. You've already that. seen the picture of what that thing looks like, so we're good there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Great. Back to the top of the round. That thing uh, is in your space, and so yeah. it doesn't have to move. Nope. Um, And it is green one, so you can see it. Nobody else can see it, by the way. Because you got to be within five feet of it to see it. Um, um, 
to hit. Roll mm -hmm. dice and say numbers. Uh, 18, 18, 19, 25 to hit. 25 hits. And then 12, 13, 14 to hit. That one misses. Okay, so just this one. This yep. thing okay. is flying around and it's got like mist and smoke about it. And it slams into you and does 15 points of cold damage, which you are immune to. Yep. Sorry, 20 points of cold damage, but you're immune to it, so it doesn't fucking matter. And then... Nice being a cold dragon. <laughs> well, they said that they came Blue. back hurt with from cold shit, so... This one is going to dive bomb here. Nope. This thing comes barreling out of the fog right up in your face, my Ev. Uh huh. Yep. And it does 23 to hit and yep. then 18 to hit. Yep. 14, 19 cold damage on the first one, and 16 cold damage on the second one. Uh huh. And then you get to swing at it as it retreats. I am not going to do that. Okay. I am going to reserve my reaction. Cool. I think. I think that is what I would. No, because snaps goes after I do. Before, she no, arrived snap after goes I was before you. Um, I think you started shit, and then we rolled initiative because you ran right into something. Yeah. Okay. Um. You essentially had yourself a surprise round, and then we rolled initiative, and Snaps is actually ahead of you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm reserving my action. Cool, cool, cool. And then red. <laughs> From this general direction, you all hear that horrible anguish wailing sound. Uh, and I need anyone within six spaces of this thing. So foggy. Oh. Five times six is 30 feet. So. Oh, Asta, you are so lucky. But you two are not. So you two... Oh, wait. No, I lied. I lied. I started in the wrong place. That's here. 30 feet. So Foggy definitely gets whacked. Dusk gets whacked. Aste, Ashley, and Snaps are fine. And Rasa, I couldn't tell. Oh, yes. yeah. Rasa gets whacked. Wait, so, so am I good or am I whacked? You're good. You are fine. Aste is fine. Rasa's in trouble. So, Dusk, Foggy, and Rasa are all going to roll a wisdom saving throw. Fantastic. I'm rolling some new mm. dice. Rasa, however, has disadvantage because she is in one of their spaces. You are surrounded by it. Oh, Good. fuck. <laughs> 26 for Dusk. I really don't like that disadvantage because I initially rolled a 21. Oh, 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 no. The disadvantage doesn't apply because it's not the one that's surrounding you that is wailing. Okay. Good. So you're good. Because that's 21 because when I rolled the second die for the disadvantage, it was a nat one. Hey, hey. Oh, God. No, you're good. You said you're good. It was the whale. The noise is coming from elsewhere. Yes. Wisdom saving throw. 17. You're good. Uh, 
Um, we're getting rid of this because I have dumbed down this monster. It does no damage on a, fa a successful save. So, Rasa, what was Dusk's saving throw? 26. 26. 26. Yeah, you're all, you all did great. Y'all are fine. It's freaking you out a little bit, but it doesn't really penetrate your little brain. So, you're good to go. Uh, that was one, and that was this one. So, he can't do it anymore. <laughs> Uh, and trying to recharge something uses a creature's action, correct? Uh, it happens it at the beginning of the creature. Thing. If you're oh, if you have like roll dice, yeah, end of turn or beginning of turn. I forget how it happens, but yeah. Anyway. Okay, so it doesn't use their action to try and recharge that. No. Okay, cool. Not unless it says. Yeah, unless it explicitly says that, I'd say no. Got it. Okay, great. So that was these guys on round two is complete. And now it's Snap's turn. First things first, um, Spirit Guardians, I'm also going to upcast to fourth level. Uh, that's 15. I don't know why this radius. green one is still visible. Is it within five feet of somebody? It's on, yes, top, it of Rasa. on top of Rasa. Oh, it's on top of Rasa. So you guys can't see it, but Rasa can. Got it. Although you can hear Rasa freaking out about being surrounded by this thing. Yeah, there probably would have been like an off fuck. Definitely wondering to myself why we're fighting these things in their own territory, but it's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm not holding that. I think all of this is about to be their territory. Well, you know, why would we just elect to go inside, though? <laughs> Sure yeah, yeah, you're right. Who who would decide to just kick on rocket boots and fly into fog? That sounds like all a stupid you. person's decision. <laughs> I don't know, but the, by the looks of the, me being the only person outside of the fog. Well, you're probably <laughs> the most capable of ranged combat of a lot of us. Yeah, you know, that'd be really if good if I could see, see it. them. <laughs> it'd be really good if I could see them. Yep, yep, yep. Shut up! Um, it is Snap's turn. Is Snap still deciding what Snaps is going to do? Snap says cast Spirit Guardians at fourth level, and then I know Maya is getting hit next to me, even though I can't see what has hit her because it's on the other side of her, or was before it moved, I suppose. So I was going to move here, and then here, and then here. But can I see this thing now next to me? Yes, as soon as you stepped to within five feet of it, you could see it. So and you can, can see it. you can Here. see Rasa through it. That oh, shit. So I can see that far to the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah. Okay. You can see mm, through it okay. to see Rasa. And okay. So I've done. I don't know that I. I want to. Uh, I'm going to move the spiritual weapon. Uh, nine, ten, fifteen. 20. I'm going to take a bunk at it with the spiritual weapon. Back away! That's a 14. Not so much. Not it's so a wispy much. little fucker and it just sl flaps its little head, skull part out of the way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna do do go right there, and mm -hmm. I am telling Maya that it's right here, and I'm gesturing to it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Indicating to her where it is, so she can see me. Great. And you will remind me when it's its turn that Spirit Guardians does a thing. Yep. Cool. Maya, what are you gonna do? I'm going to step to exactly where Snaps just was cool. and go and right here. Oh! Thing. Do I automatically have advantage with it being around my cohort? <laughs> yeah, why not? It's distracted by its engulfment oh, of Rasa. Fantastic. I'm going to hit it. 
first attack is uh, a lot. 23 to hit. Yes. Second attack will be uh, still 20 something to hit, but 22, I think. Cool. Yep, they both hit. Sweet. Both times. Both times. Plus four. Plus four. That's, that's nice easy. Fourteen. Eighteen. And then another four is twenty two points altogether. Of what kind? From the two slashy slashies. All slashy slashy. All slash slashy. 20, 22 points of slashy slashy. Yes? Question. Yep. Yes. Did you include your plus two for rage both times? Yes, I did. Okay. Good on you. Because you that struggled with that in our duel. I'm not going to let you struggle with that in the fight that's actively scary. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That um, happened. You okay, whacked the okay. scully bit twice. Uh-huh. Cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm still raging. I have done an attack, so my rage will persist. And... Um, okay, all right. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, I don't really have a useful use for my bonus action, but the green guy that is engulfing Rasa will have disadvantage to try to attack anyone but me. Cool. That's my F second turn. Augie, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm no, I don't know how far away from Snaps and Maiev you are, but you might have heard them say, it's right here! Meep. Meep. Whoops. Meep. 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 Oh, me! Sorry! ADHD, yes, is, you. ADHD is going you, poorly tonight. You may have heard <laughs> Snaps say, it's right here! But you can't see Snaps. Yeah, so I'd have to make a best guesstimate on an angle. But I also heard a whale happen right here. Yes, you did. Like, mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. south of me. Yes, you did. Somewhere in mm -hmm. that range, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm gonna light my fucking hands on fire. Hoggy fire! Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna throw a shot straight downwards. You hit the barn and it that. catches on fire. Yeah. <laughs> they nice. they dissipate after 30 feet, so it's fine. It'll dissipate here. Okay, that's good. Well, it's 35, but I get what you're saying. That's good. Plain as it. <laughs> get this 20 out of here. Yeah. Natural 20. Fuck yeah. I think that hits. Let's okay. fucking go. All right. So those darts normally do 1d8 plus 3. So that's 2d8 plus 3. I've only got 1d8 in this set, and my other dice are elsewhere right now. So I'm just going to roll this 1d8 twice. So here we go. You're fired. Uh, 8 and 6 is the same as 7 and 7, which is 14, 15, and 16. 17 points of radiant damage. I don't get to add my rage bonus to this. Okay. Second bolt. So thirty forty fifty 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 nineteen to hit. Yes. One D eight plus three. Uh six, seven, eight, nine points of radiant damage. Oh. Uh and now, foolishly after that second one, I'm gonna ask, does it sound like I'm hitting something? Um yeah. All right, I'm going to spend I mean, a key point. I mean, it doesn't go more. the full 30 feet. Okay, then yeah, I'm going to spend a key it, point and throw it's... two more. 
Yeah, you, I mean, the fog is lighting up closer to you than your estimate of what 30 feet distance would be before it goes out. It's definitely interrupted on its trajectory. Fantastic. Spend a key point and throw two more. Uh, 17 plus stuff. Or 24 technically yes. is the total. There you go, yeah. Uh, five points of radiant damage. Okay. Twenty four to hit again. Mm-hmm. Five points of radiant damage again. Oh. Uh and now I'm gonna do a foolish thing. Um am I? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm gonna do uh I'm gonna do a not foolish thing and I'm just gonna stay here and be ready to swipe at something with my tail if it gets close, which I can't do unless it enters my range and then leaves. <laughs> I was going to say, you have a uh, inspiration, right? So you could try something crazy. I could try something crazy. I do have the, the one free inspiration per session to try to do something crazy. Something dope. The moon maiden's with you, Foggy. And she's in a mood. She's ready. <laughs> For vengeance. Moon Maiden is PMFN. We, we we did just have a super moon That's and mood. an eclipse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Foggy uh, and Karak uh, are sort of in this rage state. But for a moment, Foggy's just going to focus himself for a second and say, okay, Talking a lot about faith today. All right, Moon Maiden, guide my damn eyes, please. And I'm going to kick on the boots again. Uh, okay. This gives me another uh, 80 feet of movement. Uh, I'm going to use yep. 75 of it to go straight fucking up. And I want to see if I can see anything down through the top of this fog. Like, if I can see potentially, like a place where the fog is coming from. Like, I want to just see if I can get more information. I'm only using 75 feet of the movement because the last five feet of the movement is I'm going to kick them on just before I hit the ground so I don't take fall damage. Okay. So, you're going My up 75 feet. Yes. Into the air. Yes. You and I'm hoping to see something. Burst. Yeah, you burst up out of... And look down upon a complete wide out fog cloud below you that seems to be roiling um, more. And this is the whole uh, used your rule of cool inspiration thing. Yeah, that's my hope. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I'm feeding you. This, you see. Uh, in four places, the fog seems to be swirling more than anywhere else. And I will point to those four places for you. You see a, a lot of activity here. Okay. Here. Okay. Here. Okay. And here. Okay. And this activity seems Worse than the rest. more... It's, it seems to have a larger radius than the other three pools of swirling fog. That particular bit of fog. It also kind of looks like there's a, uh, like a, you know how when you have your toes sticking up and your blanket covers your toes? Yeah. It's like that. Oh, like there's a, like the, the. If it's one of these little floaty guys, he's like floating higher in the air and producing the smoke downwards. Like that's kind of what you're roughly describing. If it's even the same type of creature. Yeah, if it were the same type of creature, that would be a good imagination thing. Okay, but, but it's probably remember not also the same that type the of area of disturbance is almost twice as large yeah, as the other areas of disturbance, or fifty percent larger. There's something else bigger in this fog. Got it. Cool. Good. Yes. Great. Yes. Cool. And uh, do you have to come down on this turn, or do you stay floating up there until the beginning of your next turn? 
Uh, no. Like falling would begin flying. to happen. Yeah, I'm not flying. I, I, uh, I, I don't. You these jump. boots don't give me the ability to hover. Um, yeah, so you just jump and now yeah, you come back so, down. So I'm going to start falling for 75 feet and then I have five feet of flight movement left. I'm just going to use it to, to slow my to fall, not fall right near the Got end. It. And land back on the ground. And land back on the ground. With your with hot now, little boots. With now a rough idea of that there's something, like there's, there's three in a rough line here-ish and one here. The one I've been waiting yep, on. Yeah, that's what you know. Yep, cool. That's what you know. And the guy northmost-ish is bigger and scarier. Great. Aste, what are you going to do? That's a good question, because I can't see anything. Um, oh, you, saw anything. Me, you saw me there, rock you it up out of the top of the fog. Rock it up out. There, there is the question of, is the fog thin enough here for me to see these two? Especially with this guy being like ethereal to disturb the fog. Because that's um, not even five feet. A fog there. Um, I'd say you can kind of make out that Rasa is right there, but I'm not sure how much of that monster you can really see unless you get into his fog. Because he is completely obscured by the fog, unless you're in his space or immediately yeah. adjacent to him. Why are we fighting in the fog? Ah... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Why but you we... saw where the fog took over Rasa, or where Rasa ran into the fog, and you can kind of make out on the edge of the fog that Rasa's right there on the edge of the fog. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what to do here. Um, because these things are my melee wouldn't be very helpful here. Because let's be real here, these things are probably immune to poison. Probably. Um. Ah. Can't you fly? Oh, I don't have those attuned right now. I changed that up for the lower hold. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I only have three. That would have been helpful to be up uh, above it and be like shouting. It's, yeah. I'm right above it. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. I don't think I have. Well, you know what? Couldn't have known. Yeah, true. Um, the problem is, is most of my spells are what you can see, or I don't even know that we're fighting right now in reality. Yeah. Like, like I don't really know what to do because my plan was to bait them out of the fog, take them out of the fog, and fight on our own terms. But we've decided they moved the collectively. <laughs> That we are going to run into the big white cloud. <laughs> well, sure? uh, the, the cloud rolled over us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and I seem to, I, I don't know where your body was in relation to where my Ev's body was when the surprise round happened. I was but right my Ev was in. not in the fog. She was adjacent to the fog and it came out of the fog to get her. Yeah. And then dove back in. That's what I was hoping was going to happen again, to be honest with you. Yeah. But... But then, and then they moved you know, the fog. <laughs> two more of us, if three you get... more of us decided, let's go in there. Yeah, <laughs> if you get close enough to the edge, they might come out to try to attack you, but uh... you would be attacked. Uh... And then they would retreat back into the fog. Yeah, so the only way you could actually do anything is by holding attacks. an action. Or opportunity. Well, and holding your action. Yeah. So that if it does die bomb out of the cloud, something goes off. But if it's a spell, that spell is wasted if nothing comes diving out of the fog. You know what right. I mean? Right. What's this? See, the problem is, is this is the only one I can interact with if I want to do something this turn. Um, so what happens if I go just on theory here? Is that technically me in the fog and seeing it? I don't even know. Yes, you are okay. within five feet of it. You can see it. You can see that it is swirling maniacally all around Rasa. I'll go here. Um, and then I guess, let's see. What can I throw with this thing? That will hurt. <laughs> what does that vortex thing do? Uh, vortex warp teleports something. 
So you could get it off of Rasa and put it somewhere else? Can I still outside see outside the fog? the fog? Can I see outside the fog? Yeah, you're literally on the edge of the fog. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, uh, yeah, I can go 90 feet away if it makes a, if it doesn't make a con 16 save. Con 16. Con. Con. Oh, dear. 15. 1, 5. Yep, it goes next to the fireplace. <laughs> so this one is now over here and completely visible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll stay for the win. <laughs> yeah, <There we> go. <laughs> so let me see her. And you are within five feet of Rasa, so you can see her now, too. Yeah. I mean, you could see her before, and you could just wave at her. It's gone now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Boop. Bye. And then I guess I will use uh, my bonus action to set myself up to... Uh, I'll use the starlight step to head back out of the fog so I can do cool wizard shit to this thing yeah, next turn. Start, yeah. start engaging it before it gets back into its favorite terrain. That's what I was... That's, the, that's my plan. Brilliant. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then that'll be it. Because that was action bonus action movement. Yep. Okay, cool. So, Dusk! What are you going to do? Alright. I'm assuming I might have seen like the bolts of fire glint through the fog and hit something yeah maybe. you saw little explosions in the fog yep i'm gonna like kind of step one by one this way try and uh feel my way that's 10 feet 50. now you can see something give me a moment yep. the one i was shooting at it's like whoa foggy right here buddy i'm already on him I, I saw like your rocket up through the cloud too. Yep. I was like, Where is you going? probably did see like a firework, like a, like a launch, like a rocket launch through the fog. It's like, <laughs> where the fuck is he going? Um, it's like, oh, I probably rolled a net. All right. Uh, right in front of me. Um, I'm going to. I'm gonna. Dump a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to use guiding bolt. I am in melee range, so I have disadvantage. But going to try to cancel it with heroic operation. So I'm hitting it point blank with a level. Five guided bolt. Okay. All right. Clicking the button. All right. Not disadvantage, not advantage, just regular roll. Big bucks. No whammies. 19 plus 8 is 27. That totally hits. Yeah. Thank God. Guided bolt. Remember some That is a fat 6D. You know, 8d6. Of what? Radiant. Fabulous. 8d6. Hit him. Seven, eight. Welcome back. Two. Eleven. Eighteen. Twenty. Four. 27 radiant damage. Wow. Nice. That was lovely. What's next? Uh, that was my action. It's now glowing, and the next the next attack against it. Uh, next attack roll made against target before the end of your next turn has advantage. Um, this action. I am going to hidden. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hidden step. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll turn invisible. Oh, bamf out! But the aura is still there. 
So you're not physically moving. You're just I, going invisible, yeah, staying right I, there. Okay. I turn as invisible. As far as it knows, you've disappeared. I think I will move like around this side of it. I don't know if I'll still provide flanking if I'm invisible or not. I don't know. Nope. Well, uh, no, no, you well the next attack would have... Distracted uh, by you if it doesn't know you're there. But yeah, it's, it's okay. in your aura of your spirit guardian. So, That's yeah. True. And it's glowing, so the next attack will have and advantage. And it's glowing, anyways. it's advantage anyway, yeah. So, uh, and uh, I will yeah. say, because it is glowing, anybody within 15 feet of it can identify where it is. Nice. Do I still don't? I'm going to be like, right here on me! Yoo-hoo! Yep, yep, yep. Right. Okay, 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 okay. That's the end of Dust's turn. Uh, yeah. Is that the end of Dusk's turn? Dusk's turn? Cool. Yes, that's the end of my turn. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. No, thank you. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, forty. And the crashing noises that y'all have been hearing have moved, and they're coming from this general direction now, somewhere up in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Boom, crash, boom, bang, crash. And it is Ross's turn. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was round two. Um, I don't know what languages Foggy knows. So I don't know if I say these words aloud or not. Tell me what languages you know, Foggy. Sorry, helps to have your microphone unmuted when you read off a list, huh? Common, yeah. Draconic, Elvish, Sylvan. Great. So you're hearing some gobbledygook from over there. Damn it! It's it's very <laughs> loud and booming voice that is obviously language of some sort that you do not quite recognize. Dusk, you're hearing it. Uh, tell me your languages. I know common and giant. Uh, it's uh, quite a distance from you. The the voice, but. You can kind of make out in giant. Oh no! Enough sound oh, that no. <laughs> it's like the the word where, and maybe the word her or she, but it's at such a distance, and it is through this fog that you're having a little trouble deciphering what you're hearing. But it does give you the impression that there is a search going on in that general direction. By something very big and booming. Roger. Roger that. Okay, Rasa, what are you going to do? So the guy that was directly in front of me went poof. He was literally surrounding your body. Yep, and he went <laughs> poof. And, and I'm assuming saw, that... Yeah, you saw uh, Aste run up. You saw him arrive, he looked you in the face, the and thing disappeared, and then Oste went away. <laughs> and then he backed off. But yeah. I can't see through the fog to even see Foggy anymore. Right. So I'm assuming that me hearing Dusk and me having my passive perception and whatnot, I would have an idea of the direction that that was coming from. Have yeah, well, and the one that Dusk uh, lit up. I can't see. You said it's within 15, and I think I'm 25 feet away. Yeah, but you have some general idea of the direction to go. Yeah. So at that point, I think I would just walk until I could then see it. Then you can it. see the glow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you, you can't can see, see it, but you can yeah. see the glow of it. Okay. Um, been a while. So, yeah, I have a vantage, and I also have retreat thingy majiggy. Yeah. Mobile, thank now. you for that word. I couldn't. With a, with a dagger. Yep. And, and we're going to take 
the oh, yeah. dagger that has been vibrating wildly. Hell yeah. Oh, it, it did calm down eventually. Yes, but it, it, it was that enough that, days. you know, it made a point. It's like a bone. Yep. Oh, that's not lovely. That's uh, not lovely. No, that's a, that's a 16 with advantage. That hits. Oh, really? Yep. Please yeah. brace for sneak attack. Brace for sneak attack plus some other shit that y'all don't that's know going about. On. Okay, give me a minute because I got I have dice to roll. Do you have no. that many of them? Of course I oh, do. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Just check oh. in. I love hearing Ooh. that phrase on the hands of the players. He has a bajillion dice. I have like you. Okay. So first off, the specialness <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> she knows what I'm talking about, but the dice for the yep. specialness was like holy crud. Mm -hmm. Got the calculator. You betcha. My brain is tired. Leave me alone. Got a calculator so out, ladies and gentlemen. I do um, actually have an adding machine on my desk just for this purpose. Um, that would be 44 points of piercing damage. Fuck yeah, let's go. Sorry, the piercing was 44? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. You're right. Now It's 44 total. Hold on. Hold on. What? Oh, sorry. You're confusing me. I'm confusing myself. No, let me correct that. I'm confusing myself. Sorry. There are 25 points. Oh, I just lost her. 25 points of Piercing damage. Piercing damage. Piercing damage. Okay. And 23 points of fire damage. Oops. Cool. This is minus 25 points of piercing. And, and 23, 23 of fire. Fire. And Foggy and Dusk have a very clear understanding that some fire shit just happened. <laughs> uh, they can't see you. But they can see the fire shit happening. Oh, we had, uh, it was just advantage, right? It was nothing else? Just advantage, no, yes. Um, I got really excited for some reason. Dusk isn't even like there. You don't see him. No, I don't know where Dusk is. All righty. Anything Maya else? Will instinctively so that was just my first official attack. Okay. You got some more? I do have another attack. Yeah. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, but it's straight this time, right? Yeah. Okay. Lost. Well, yeah, you've lost advantage. Uh, okay. But yeah. Nope, that's fine. I'm going to swing with just my short sword, I think. If I can hit it. Which I should, because that's a 14 plus 9 for 23. Yes, my am. And then... Nope. Oh, that's a whopping two points of whatever this is. Uh, more piercing damage. Okay. Two more points of piercing damage. Anything else? I'm going to finish my movement because I have mobile feet. So that was 25. That's 30. And 35 and we'll call it a day. Yep, you can see it because it's glow, still glowing, right? I don't know if it's glowing anymore nope. now that I've hit it the first time. Nope. Oh, okay, so the glow is gone. But you know where mm -hmm. it is. I know the general position of it, yeah. Great. Should great, it not great, move? Great, great. And that is number two for my chromatic warding. Okay. Dun, da, da. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, from... Somewhere over here, there is a horrible wailing sound. Um, within... Was it in my circle, or was it just outside of my circle? I'm checking. <laughs> Mist, hulk, whale, six squares. Five times six is 30 feet. Measure from here. 
Yeah, that's going to get both of you. Yeah. It is outside of the circle. Oh, no. It's, okay. it's going to get all four yeah. of you. Okay. Uh, yep. What are we doing? Uh, all four of you me? are going to do a wisdom saving throw. From everybody in that circle, huh? Yeah. You are the worst. I did yep. a cool thing. Sorry. You did that, a cool thing. And Rasa that, just rode on your coattail and almost killed the thing. Yeah, and uh, that sucks, because that was a nat one for a four. Oh, oh boy. Yep. Yep. That's the second guy that's going into jail tonight. Oh, you're still immune to cold. I am still immune to cold, but not to psychic damage. Rude. Uh, uh, 15 wisdom saving is good 13 not so good 21 uh what was yours foggy 21 21 is good okay so uh 14 and below takes psychic damage of 11, 17, 21 psychic damage. And you are Yowza. incapacitated till the end of your next turn. Do uh, I, I need the breakdown of the action economy on this. Am I able to... I can't see Rasa. Never mind. Mm hmm Fog is too Great. dense for me to see Rasta, so never mind. I'm so sorry. All right, so everybody took their damage. Yeah. And this thing has now wailed. And then this one's going to try and wail. Not so much. This one's going to try and wail. No. Okay. So those guys can't wail, so they're going to do their other thing, which is move up to... 40 feet. So on this layer, 5, 10, 15. Oop. He moves into my circle. Shit happens. He moved into your circle. Wisdom saving throw. I think it's a dex it save. Happen. Is it dex? Um, wis no, it's wisdom. And it is wisdom. Yeah, and also half speed as long as it is within her circle. And her half circle. speed oh. in my circle. Yes. It was a 22, I'm sorry. Well, he still takes half damage. Cool, let's give it to him. Um, that's going to be... Hold for math. 17 is the total number, so have that down. 17 becomes round up, 18 I guess. becomes Can we do damage? Nine. Yeah. It was, a wisdom, it was a wisdom saving throw for, for what's worth. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. He, he did 20 what something. It's nine radiant. 18 nine plus radiant four. Damage. Radiant is fabulous. Love to hear it. Uh, and then he's going to try and hit you. Okay. Which is plus eight to hit. Well, a 2 plus 8 isn't going to do it much good. He's going to try again. Okay, 15 plus 8 to hit. Yeah, that hits. I thought he might. My spirit guys are out and about. And and that, oh, see dear. Eight, Don't say that. 20, when you're... 22. 23 cold damage. 23 cold My damage. ghosty guys negate 4 of that. Did you get that, Snaps? So, 19 cold damage. Thank you. You guys are not doing the best tonight. That was this guy. And this one. He just stays there? Yeah, I think so. No, they tend to dive bomb and get back out of the way. So you can take your opportunity attack. It will have 
half speed within her circle. Yeah. I doubt that hits. I'm striking at it with my spear. What the hell is my... I think this might be the first I've used my 15 to hit. 15 hits. Oh, 15 hits. Okay. Six. Four magical piercing damage. So he was here, and he went 5'10", 15'20". So he can go 5'10", 15'20". That's as far as he can go, and you can't see him anymore. But he is still in her circle. He is still in her circle. Um, then this one is in Dusk's circle, so he has to do something. He's got to do a saving throw. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Wisdom is plus four is ten. Fails, pretty sure. Fails. Uh yeah, it'll be sixteen. That will be eighteen radiant damage. Rasa almost killed him. He had two hit points left. Hell yeah. <laughs> I do pop out of my invisibility because I forced to do a saving throw. I'm not yeah, but anymore. it died, so. Yeah, but it did. Woo! Cool, cool, cool. And then this little dude over here, out of his depth, doesn't know what the fuck is happening, was unable to recharge, and he's just going to try and go 40 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Trying to get back to his cloud. Uh, he has no other range activity. Oh, death burst. Son of a bitch. Uh -oh. Each creature within like two squares. This one that just died. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> just because the only one affected, I need Shit. a dexterity saving throw. No, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so wait, am I close enough or no? No, you're not. No, you're good. No. Okay. Dexterity plus one six. nine. Not so oh, much. Gosh. On a Here failed you save, you take oh, cocked. You take seven points right. of bludgeoning damage uh, from a wave of water that e explodes out of this thing, uh, oh, and man, you oh, are okay. prone. Oh. So it knocks you prone. Okay. Uh, but it's dead. Uh, yeah. But I'm wet. And this one can <laughs> only move. What? I'm wet. <laughs> and <laughs> it is Snap's turn. What I are you gonna do, do kitty cat? I guess gotta do a constitution do... saving throw for that damage real quick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 do that. That's a sixteen. I say. Yeah, you're good. I'm going to do some currency conversion. Um, currency <laughs> conversion? Currency conversion. Um, don't know what that means, but okay. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so that's cool. <laughs> can't see within range. Sure, I, I can see my room. She's next to me. Better. All right, I'm just going to do this at third level. Um, Maev is right next to me. She hears Snap's muttering in, I'll say, Infernal. Um, and there's I this I understand what sort you're of... Saying. She's saying, my breath to your lungs, my blood to your veins. And there is this dark energy that's around her arms. And she's going to... Uh, hit you with a blast of energy, but as it hits you, it like turns gray and shimmery and radiant. And you are going to... You're gonna heal for 54 health. Holy fuck! Yup. 
And Snaps is going to take 27 necrotic damage. Was that life transference? Yep. One of my fucking favorite spells for flavor. Gravy <laughs> cleric for the win! <laughs> and how bad were you hurt, Maiev? Oh, I was just down to five hit points. It's fine. Wow, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> and then bonus action, I'm gonna I'm gonna slam back a potion. <laughs> yeah, what? do that, please. Life transference is so risky, but it's so good. Yeah, to get the barbarian up to back up is this can't be right. I've got to have more. Oh, that's because I have them in different bags. Oh <laughs> I've got to have more than two potions on me. Anyway, I'm gonna do a greater healing potion. As my bonus action. 44 plus 4. Unless I have a spell. There they all are. Bonus action. So that was the first time I have ever heard the words of that particular spell. Oh, and you feel this, this rush of uh, energy fill you. That's all done. That was absolutely uh, intense. 17 health. Not damage. Okay. And yeah, and Snap's kind of oh, shaking her hands a little bit because that stung. Um, okay. But yeah, that's. Um, I'm going to. I I know that stuff has been happening over that direction. I'm going to move here and move my thingy. I don't know that I want to leave my F. Fuck it, I'm gonna just keep going. Uh, 10? Up and would stay there, actually, because I already used my bonus action. 15. 20. Um, um, that's as far as I feel comfortable going, okay. maybe. <laughs> okay, that's my turn. Cool, Maiev, what are you going to do? You are surrounded by a white fog. I, I am surrounded by a white fog. I am speechless because that was fucking awesome. Oh, are you still incapacitated? Uh... Did you get a whale? You failed the yeah. thing, so you're incapacitated this turn. Oh, I, I am speechless for more than one reason then. Um, yeah. That was you that can was still a lot. move. Yeah, you can move, but you don't have actions or you know reactions. You have bonus um, action. Bonus action. Bonus action is a thing. Um. Gonna Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um I'm gonna trail behind snaps. Five ten fifteen. You can now see both of them. See both of them. And I will use my bonus action to initiate telepathic speech with snaps and just start. That was so fucking cool. I didn't know you could do that. I understood those words. So I know exactly what you did. And holy crap, dude. And it's just that for like six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Foggy, I believe you got hit with the screaming and are incapacitated. I've saved against every scream that's happened. Oh, you did save. Great. Somebody got hit. 
two people got hit. Rasa. Rasa, okay. I haven't gotten to your turn. That's why I don't know it. Okay, um, cool. Foggy, what are you going to do? Foggy, I think, is going to be an idiot. Big loud bellowing came from northwest ish. Uh, yeah, there were words. I couldn't understand it, but it definitely sounded like like language. I just couldn't understand it. Oh, yep, mm -hmm, exactly. It like very clearly was language. Like there's something sapient and intelligent and communicable in this fog. Yes. We've been potentially killing its kids, but fuck it. When in doubt, try words. Um, cause as far as as far as my character's brain would know, big thing was here, and then there were two in line, and two other things in line, and then we heard kathunk 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 kathunk, and this thing's shouting. Yes. So, as far as Foggy's aware, there's two more down here. But I'm hearing... I'm hearing my people all talking and conglomerating right here. Some of it's in you head, not but... not hearing my head. Right, some of it is in skull, but... Ah. Yeah, I'm thinking about potentially doing what that brown line is doing and going up here and trying to do something. But I don't know if I really want to. Don't think you have that much movement, sir. Uh, <laughs> I could if I wanted to. You are not a tabaxi. No. Uh, brown line. It's Uber. <laughs> Uber Tato is drawing line. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Anyhow, uh, God, do I want? Do I really want to try and go up there and fucking talk to this thing? Because I've seen it; it's bigger than everything else that's here, but it has language. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't understand what it was saying, but it potentially sounded scared or inquisitive. But it was language. What in the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Burris was having fun with the pen. <laughs> um. How am I doing on health? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. 10, 15, fine. 20. Do I see okay, anything? Well, before you get there. 15. Uh, uh, one more back. 10. Oh god, it was right <laughs> fucking next to me. Ten feet. Son of a fuck. Oh boy. That Happy. does not look like evil eyes, guys. This. That dude's got a lot of muscles in his elbow. Oh god. I have never heard of this before in my life. I don't I don't enjoy the this visual. Probably something. Well, I'm worried about. you can close it. <laughs> what I'm what I'm worried about is you how did it close get the a, window? How did it get a bone that large? What did, it kill? what did it kill? Did it kill? Uh, so I'm I'm essentially staring at a foot right now. It's probably about yeah. all I can see. Yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, maybe this will be convenient. Uh, Wait, oh, do gosh. I have that the right size? Dusk, it's huge. Yes, it's that's three huge. squares across. Yeah, three squares. Okay, three cool. Yeah, right. two is large. Got it. Um, fucking shit, Bob. Let, let's see if this is convenient. Is there a thorn between toes that I can remove to resolve this conflict? <laughs> do you really want to use your action to inspect no. his feet? Okay. <laughs> Let's not do that then. Um, uh, 
Isn't that like an old child's story thing of like a mouse tames a lion by just a mouse tames a lion? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I I wasn't referencing something stupid from my own brain. Good. Uh, I'm gonna shout up at this thing uh, in a still kind of angry voice because I'm still technically raging. Uh, hello. Do you speak yeah. common? Uh, give me a moment. Hold, please. <laughs> Hold, please, while we figure out if this creature speaks common, because our player is attempting to speak with it like a fucking fool. <laughs> it bellows at you. Full volume. You can feel its breath pour down on you as it shouts, Where's Amalek? Is that the name we've been looking for? You nope. were looking for Maisie. We're looking for maybe. I don't know who that is. Can I have a description? Um, I'm going to give you one more response. Yeah, that's about all I was going to ask for. And... There is a word I need that is on this other page buried down in here. Um, it is going to wipe a hand down across its face. And it's going to yell, leave me alone. Okay. I will continue conversation next turn. For now, uh, quite unfortunately, my tail is going to... Um, as I haven't done damage this turn or taken damage this turn. So uh, my rage is going to fade. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Could hit the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you could just whack. Chill could out. Just poke that bear. Yeah, do it. <laughs> I don't know, where you see a giant dude with a, a huge bone, I see a very, very large pile of XP. <laughs> <laughs> I see a large pile of emotion, thank you. See, so I see you being a large pile of bones and meat. Yeah, that's when he how slips it goes. You. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably about all I'm going to get here in a minute. Uh, anywho, that's my turn. XP pinata. Great. Uh, Aste, what are you going to do? That thing is barreling back toward you in the cloud. Yeah, I'm going to tear this house apart and I'm going to hit him with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Are we the baddies? (laughs) Not the giant. The thing that I tore out of the cloud. Are we the baddies? But I'm I'm going to upcast to fifth twin cast uh, catapult and I'm just going to tear this house apart and just... Uh, that being, uh, cause, um, it has to move in a straight line, so I'm gonna take from, like, here, and, like, here, and just... Cool. Does uh, it have uh, to dodge that or anything? Yes, it makes a couple saves here. Let me get the numbers for you. That would be two DC 16 dex saves versus 14 D8. Right. Dex is plus five, so the first one was a seven. Yeah, that's... The second one is a 23. Oh, uh, can I can I silvery that? Is uh, that a thing I can do? Can I silvery barbs that? Is that a thing I can do? I don't know. How does silvery barbs work? Uh, it is also a leveled spell. It's just a reaction, and then I force it to reroll. Oh, but if you already did a leveled spell, you cannot do a leveled spell. That's what I was thinking. <sighs> that makes me extremely sad. I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, it still takes seven d eight. Uh funny man damage for the first bit and that's as an action okay hold on what am i doing here so i spend five thingy my bobber bronies then i'll spend the rest two after so there and then it takes 78 i'm actually just gonna roll that damage in <clears throat> Roll 78. That's going to be 
37 points of magical bludgeoning. Cool. Uh, and then I'm going to spend the other two last sorcery points I have to quick cast a cantrip, which I'll probably just do firebolt. Eh. Why not? A little bit of sugar on top, right? Mm-hmm. That's going to be a poopy butthole to hit. 14. Oh, sorry, no. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It was really close. Yeah. Found the AC. Okay. You hear from the barn, if you look over your shoulder and see this big hole in the side of the barn, you see a face pressed up against the hole and some dude yelling, they're fighting something! <laughs> yes, How there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dusk, oh, I'm, I'm... what are you going to do? Uh, oh, is, is Oste done? Yeah. Okay. I'm Dusk, what are you going to do? Dusk is going to spit water out of his mouth. Stand up. He's going to stand up. Did he hear... And the skull of this thing is on the ground, right oh. at your feet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go, Ugh. Uh, Did Dusk hear the conversation between Foggy and the giant? Um, it's muffled and quite distant, but you could tell that Foggy was talking and something loud answered. All right. Well, that sounds like something intelligent's going on over there. I'm going to first do Twilight Sanctuary, just because that's an idea. Getting beat up. <laughs> that's a 30-foot radius. Um, and Wait, I'm what's going that? to, that's a Twilight Sanctuary. I'm going to use my action okay, to cool. on Twilight Sanctuary, um, cause I don't need to see anybody to do it. I go five, 10, 15, 25, 30. I'm just going to shout in giant. I can s understand you brother. How can we help okay. you? Oh, thank fuck for Twilight Sanctuary. Okay, and is that your whole turn? That'll be my whole turn, and I'm going to do my Twilight Sanctuary, which is and a the response. Plus. The response you're going to get is, um, I'm hungry. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> He's angry. Hungry. Oh. He's hungry. Leave angry. him alone. Um, and then the Foggy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Foggy is. Give me just a moment. I'm going to move the cloud briefly so that I can see what's around Foggy and the guy. See that blue round building over there, Foggy? Did you see it? Did you see it? No, this one over here. Token layer. This, there's a building over here. You hear it crunch and smash, and you see this thing swing in its uh, big old pummely thing at that structure. And then you have an attack of opportunity as it steps away from you. Pivotal moment. Poke the bear, or don't poke. Is Gregory hearing me? Gregory has his mic muted because he's ADHD stimming in panic in the background, and I'm trying not to distract people. <laughs> um, Great. And oh, so, hey, wait uh, a minute. Did I fuck up? He was in your... Um, I liked uh, your um, oh, spirit guardians oh, no. at the beginning of his he turn. He was in spirit guardians, so he's going to get hurt now. Oh, damn it. Sorry, Please make what's this his save. saving throw? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You wait. can't see him, so you don't know if he's there. Oh, yeah, I can't see him. Do I have to see him for this thing to work? 
No, but no, it's in order for you to determine what is in is order, not in order, in order for way. you to, in order for you to say he's immune, you have to know where he is. It's okay. It's a, it's a dex save. When you cast it, it doesn't. You know, it's, it's a wisdom save. A, a, wisdom save. Yeah, oh, that's the, fine. That's fine. He got a twenty. Okay, he saves. Oh, so I still think it's half damage. half damage. Oh, he still takes half damage. God oh, okay. damn it! How many? Uh, four. Oh. Well, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> Boy. Well, 19? Half. Down to 10. To 10. Minus 10 radiant damage. 10. Great. And then he steps away from Foggy, who has an attack of opportunity if he so chooses. I, I'm not taking it. 18, 20, 25, 30, 30, oh, 30, 35, 40. Where's this going? gonna go? He's just looking for something. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Mm, that's about right. That looks good to me. Great. Oh, boy. That's happening. The professor is now in the fall. <clears throat> The professor is in the fog. Great. <laughs> His turn is finished. It is Rasa's turn. She is incapacitated. Yep. You have movement right. and bonus action. Um, my guess is she's thing? just going to start wandering towards where she hears a lot of the clipping yelling. Because that's all she can hear and see. Yeah, but all that yelling was 40 feet away from where the baddie is now. <laughs> But she don't know that. See him again. She don't know that. And he's back on the lost in the fog mm -hmm. layer. She's gonna stop there because she honestly don't know what's going on. She couldn't see. And you can Morning. see dusk. Um. 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 No, give me a minute. Oh. Nope. Nope. I really have nothing I can do. You want to hold an attack action for when a bad thing becomes visible and specify that you don't attack consider? Because... Well, can I hold a bonus action attack? I don't think so, right? You can hold an attack action. You can do a bonus no, action I don't have an as attack an action. attack. She's incapacitated. Oh, I'm incapacitated. So oh, I only have right. to consider. Yeah, no, you don't. Incapacitated our rogue. Action. I'm okay. sorry, I incapacitated the rogue. But you got Not movement. Yep. You could drink a potion. I'm not feeling the need so far. Okay. Cool. I'm really not sorry, yet. I incapacitated you. That's okay. Okay. Shit happens next. Um. Uh, we're starting yeah. the next round, correct? Yes. It is quarter after one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this one really did last get out of hand for me. I didn't even notice. Yeah. I'm 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 suffering here. <laughs> 10 a.m. is going to come and whoop my ass real quick. I am so sorry, guys. I don't know how I just lost track of time completely. I had no idea. It's all right. It's a fun one though. We wanted yeah. to figure out what the baddie was. Now we got the bad. Yeah. Well, sort of bad. We have to, we're going to keep trying to talk to it, because I'm dumb. Well, it doesn't want to be reasoned with. The big long boy believes in us. There's if it doesn't another believe in chompy. us. There's yeah. another chompy in the mist somewhere. Yeah, that'll be a fun thing to discover. Right? Yeah, one, one escaped north of uh, where Snaps is currently standing. Uh, uh, so it's somewhere. Make a perimeter. There. Make a perimeter. Uh, if the thing doesn't want to be reasoned with, we'll kill it. But, you know, that's if it doesn't want to be reasoned with. Now that I've attempted that process. That's funny. You think you can take on a fog giant? A.K.A. the <laughs> third highest of the giant hierarchy? Oh, you know. You can do it. Fourth highest. The low cloud yeah, giants, storm fuck. giants, titans. <laughs> well, either way. Good it, night, YouTube. It, yeah, it's threads it's below in us. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I need to go.